What is up, Friday Nighters? Welcome back to another episode of Just Another Friday Night. It is, in fact, Just Another Friday Night. I am one of your two hosts, CM Chuck. You can just call me CM for tonight. And across from me, the man of the hour, the tower of power, Ooh. too sweet to be sour. Damn. Double A, Adam Antium Adam. What's up, everyone? Cheers. Cheers. It's Friday, guys, and we need a drink. It's Friday. Ooh, it was a long, hot week. <laughs> long, hot week. Yes, double A, indeed. I agree with you 100%, sir. Uh, Facebook user says, cheers, guys. I uh, believe hey, that is Steve in the house. Steve, up, Steve? Um, before we get going here, man, I want to take a moment and send our sincere condolences to you. Uh, we know that your family had a recent loss, a uh, big Sorry, one. I uh, won't go into details as this is not the time or the place, but we do want to let you know that our heart Thoughts and prayers are with you and your family at this time, brother. Uh, thank you so much for supporting us and always being here. Uh, we know you're going to pull through. Here's to her. Wani in the house once says, what's up, gentlemen? Cheers. Cheers uh, Steve says, thank you, guys. Of course, Steve. Always uh, think, uh, appreciative of your support uh, of us, and uh, we feel the same about you. Uh, some other things I want to mention real quick at the top here, um, you know, not to keep it. Uh, any kind of way, but uh, our good friend over at the Now Watch This podcast, the Dork Dad himself, uh, Lucky, is also kind of experiencing the trials and tribulations of life. Uh, so we want to wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, Luck, get better. Uh, we know that you will. We know that you're a, a fighter, you're strong, and you're going to pull through. Uh, you're the Batman of the Batman and Robin of you and Joe. Damn. So we definitely want you no, to. Not we. to uh, uh, maybe Damn. I don't know. Damn. <laughs> we definitely want us uh, you to, to show us that resilience, brother. We know you're gonna uh, gonna be just fine, man. Don't worry about it. We're here for you. We're supporting you. Uh, love your brother. Uh, so yeah, let, get better. Uh, Antonio Caruso in the house says, get better, Lucky, praying for you. We appreciate you being here, Anthony. Uh, man, I am not completely done yet with the recent Patreon episode on all things. Um, Multiverse of Madness, but it was a lot of heartbreak in that one, Double A. Let me tell you, Anthony and everyone's favorite Elf Julia had a lot of strong opinions about a movie we really yeah, enjoyed. I, I remember, yeah. So it was, uh, it was tough. Jerry D was supposed to be on, and I was, I was crying out for him. Jerry, Jerry, <laughs> always love watching you guys. Appreciate that, Anthony. Uh, on that note, man, uh, we're gonna get into this real quick, and I want to make sure that I give all the credit that's due to the favorite elf over at tis the podcast julia who had a great update on something that a lot of fans are talking about right now double a did you catch the she hulk trailer no i didn't see it and um i posted it uh -huh. <laughs> but i didn't see it but then i i read all of y'all's reviews and i was like it just kept seeing cgi suck cgi <laughs> suck so i was like okay i'll watch it a little bit uh, and i did, never got around to it we did feel kind of like the cgi wasn't that tight in moon knight and then it wasn't that tight in multiverse of madness so we were i was like man this is kind of a big deal well anthony uh brought up a very great point that got brought up at the end of their recent patreon episode where him and julia discussed multiverse of madness uh again guys tis the podcast go check it out i get the patreon episodes for just a buck and it's fantastic but the regular episodes are, are totally free so go check them out too uh one of our favorite christmas podcasts for sure but julia said that Disney has a new CEO or okay. a president, something like that. The guy in charge, anyway, at Disney. And he's all about putting money towards theme parks and not their properties. Okay, not the one that's going to make you money. Yeah, not okay. your franchises that have pretty much built you to the yeah. empire that you yeah. are. The which, billions and billions of dollars. <laughs> double A, I do not want to see shitty CGI in Obi-Wan. <sighs> I will be fucking devastated if I see that. You know, that's what I always hate, and that's classic management that just comes in. It's always like, where can I save money? Where can we do this? Where can we do that? I mean, that's where you're going to lose people. Exactly. No one cares about Mickey anymore. We're, we're, Sorry. We're <laughs> all hardcore fans, man, it's Marvel of and this Star stuff. Wars. Yeah. And, and yes, double A, the CGI is kind of choppy in that, in that you know, uh, She-Hulk trailer. You, you spend $200 million on Doctor Strange, you're going to get $700, $900 million. Oh, come on. You know, as a divisive film, look what it's doing right now. It's exactly. crushing it. it it's last crushing time I checked, it. it was like 600 mil. I mean, yeah. I mean, and it's going to go up even higher. I mean, it's crushing it with shit CGI. I would imagine what it would be doing with great CGI. I mean, yeah. So, again, uh, thank you so much, um, you put, uh, Julia. Poor, you know, it's just the podcast. Poor 
shitting your product and you're going to get an end result, you know? Yeah, because I didn't, I wasn't aware that this new head of Disney is the one that's <clears throat> moving money to theme parks and all that, which, yes, I get it. Bring the people in and well, it's, yeah, the, you know, the rich people. Yeah. Because I can't fucking afford to go. I, I want to go to Galaxy's Edge. To go. <laughs> yeah, I want Galaxy's Edge to come to me. I have a friend at work that said he had to save $10,000 just to go. Jeez, just to have a fun time. 10000 Yeah, I was like, uh... Okay. <laughs> Friend of the podcast, Kara in the house. Kara says, come on, Disney, get it together. Get it together. And uh, Anthony obviously says, uh, don't forget to mention Julia, which I did, Anthony, so I hope you let her know. Um, but, uh, Kara, you went to Disney recently. Kara, uh, what was your experience like, and was it overpriced for what you got? Because ten grand? I mean, like, ten and grand, that, that's, that's a big... a family of, like, four or five. Yeah, that's a know? big windfall for a lot of us. It uh, could, yeah, like, it improve yeah. our day-to-day lives, yeah, pay your house down faster. Yeah, I can't fucking do that. It has to be, like, five years of planning yeah. on saving. I'd have to take out equity uh a loan against the equity in my home mm. now to afford a trip like that. And even then, I mean, it's like, you know, uh, shoot, my boss told me she just canceled her trip to Disney because her and her husband realized it was not it wasn't financially feasible it's not. you know they'd rather it's go not. to like louisiana or you know washington dc <laughs> and spend time there yeah. you know and, and enjoy your and money. i'd rather watch this marvel and star wars shit yes go. <laughs> yes with good cgi come on it's not that not that hard they've been doing it they've been doing it uh anthony says exactly putting the money in the theme parks uh and raising prices at the parks yeah. <laughs> that what raising price for me to go wait yeah. wait in lines in in record heat mm-hmm Heat that has never been recorded on the planet before? I'm good. No, thanks. You know, uh, Kara there right there says, 100% overpriced. Uh, Anthony says, he's insane. (laughs) Agree. She says, the food was terrible. That sucks to know. Uh, Hey, guys. Rox is in the house. What's up, Foxy Roxy? Joe says, Chuck's favorite player is LeBron. Wow. Um, 100% not true, as I am dressed here. Uh, And Joe, uh, just for you, we do have this in play so uh <laughs> joe that is there in case you're wondering uh, uh <laughs> a facebook user says all about the lettuce guys all about the lettuce guys who, uh, who mentioned the lettuce uh let us quick, know who you I are you're say, correct uh, thanks roxanne uh for last friday it was a lot of fun uh, thank you if you're still on it was really fun the atmosphere was great and it was exactly what my wife needed so thank you very much and that's so very very high, high praise and compliments here's to you foxy roxy and john for putting on a wonderful friday the 13th party it was great uh, i enjoyed it i had a we blast i got to catch up with one of my very great old friends you mm-hmm. got to see him yes, right as he did. got there yes, uh, for a while. mr mark robinson yeah. and his lovely wife Yvette. Yvette. Mm-hmm. so uh that was uh well you know for me i cried for yeah, i got to see marquis <laughs> and aaron and uh, I finally, I think I finally met his brother for his brother Charlie. Finally, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, Welcome so. back from the Navy, Charlie. And, and he said to you, he was like, yeah, "You're the pod guy." I was like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I watched you guys when I was in uh when I was overseas." Yeah. So I was like, "Cool." So you're probably the one percent of Japan that was watching. <laughs> 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 very true today i told my dad he's like where are you going i said where i go every friday night to go you know write produce and star in the show that i do and he goes i thought cat was a star Damn. Damn. <laughs> i said yeah you're right double a uh, is the star no, 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 no. No. <laughs> uh let's see uh joe says the hippie lettuce he says uh yay had so much fun on friday the 13th maybe that's still you that's Roxanne. Roxanne. Yeah. Thank uh, Roxanne. joe stay on man i i know you're not gonna really like the topic but you know i would like to get your feedback you know uh you might have saw them you know playing live who knows i don't know if you did or not mm-hmm. uh, just stick around if you can if you can i, I know also, you're always super busy so i, I also told him that it's a great story uh, yeah, within, it was. It really of, is. of of uh inside and outside yeah. father and son yeah. one of the aspects i loved about it uh who's a sports guy so joe yeah. may be having these very same conversations in a yeah. few short years yeah uh again uh joe congrats to your uh boy on oh, his man, way to it. ollu yeah, um it. And I want to say congrats to a young man that I won't get to say congrats to. Oh, in fact, I may have to move next Friday's show. I just found out because Jeremy's graduation uh, is next Friday. What time? So uh, at 8. 8 p.m.? 8 p.m. Oof. Yeah, and it's out there in Good Medina long. Valley, so we got to drive Ooh, right, maybe an hour. So, guys, maybe a Thursday show next next week. Uh, we don't have a topic set yet, so if you have ideas, feel free to talk about it. Next weekend. No, that'd be, that actually might be better because uh, Kenobi premieres next Friday. So, oh, it's, so you guys won't be watching us anyway because yeah, so you'll I mean, be balls deep in that show. If I was a fan, I'd be watching Kenobi too. 
<laughs> yeah, we need now watch this to get on so we can watch that show while we're podcasting at the same time. <laughs> Joe says Thursday Night Thunder. There you go, nice. Thursday Night Thunder, man. Yes, yeah, so. Uh, and next weekend is to Memorial Day weekend, too. So it will be a three day oh. weekend for some of us, not so all of us. We'll have, of us. That means we have plenty of time to podcast. Yeah. We've yeah. got Friday night, set, well, Friday late night, Saturday night, and then Sunday night, even if we need to. Uh, but yes, an early congrats to a former. Uh, or a fellow yeah. alumni Jeremy. of Just Another Friday Night, Jeremy Gonzalez, graduating from Medina Valley High School. Uh, kiddo, I'm super proud of you, man. Uh, you did it. You made it. Uh, let's celebrate you uh, next Friday uh, and next weekend. And I'll even move my show. But, yeah, if you guys yeah. remember uh, Jeremy from our slasher episode during yeah, Halloween, I mean, the 80, huge Scream fan. 80 views on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah big so. time, man. Yeah, the huge uh, – I think I – think by far our youngest alumni, o, oh, unless sure. you count uh, my nephew, who's popped in <laughs> on occasion. So, uh, what else do we have here? Uh, Joe says he's on. Uh, oh, I I'm on. Got my Deftones beer. Are you drinking I'm the on. IPA and he's got or his the Deftones beer? The, okay. the regular Joe, because they've got. Oh no, the, the IPA. No, Deftones no, only I IPA. It's Pantera that has the Pantera, the okay, regular. Okay. So yeah. And then Kara says go Jeremy, and uh, Joe says they are going to be live tomorrow. Now watch this live tomorrow. Oh, very nice. I okay. cannot wait for that. Okay. I'm ready for that. And he says thirtieth is his birthday, the thirtieth. Happy early birthday, Joe! From well, now watch this. Us, we'll, we'll remember next week too. Yeah, we'll be we'll be on next week too. Yeah, and let us know where the party's at, Joe. We don't like to miss that. Um, let me see if that was all my news that I had to get in through. Uh, no. Uh, the next thing I have to just mention real quick, this is my last piece of news before we get right into it. Obviously, the boys trailer oh, came out. Yes. Yes. June Super 9th? hype. Yeah, I think June so. 9th, June 9th. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, kind so of it's coming, coming soon. right up. It's coming yeah. soon. And yeah. it was kind of like low-key quiet. Like there was nothing in the now. It, I'm kind of surprised. I don't think Amazon does a really good job. Don't you think? No. I mean, Boys is a big show. It's Dude, a huge a show. After Obama said he watched it, I'm right? like, you guys got to be yeah. on that shit. You know what I mean? Like, And it's a great on, show. It's a really great show. Stop focusing on fucking packages and get focused on this. You know what right? I mean? Like I mean, the Boys season three, man, we can't wait. You yeah. know we will be covering that. Uh, it is one of our favorite shows. Um, favorite guys, comics, favorite shows. Yeah, from one of our favorite writers, Garth Ennis. Again, yeah, being yeah. adapted, another work of his being adapted. So. So if you have not watched The Boys on Amazon Prime, The Boys alone is worth getting Amazon Prime. Go watch The Boys. It is amazing. Uh, Joe also says, dude, an incredible, uh, oh, invincible, invincible as well. They haven't said shit. Um, I know. I think I did read something where, where uh, what's his name? Blind? What's, what's going uh, on? Uh, I was going to say Glenn Ree. That's not his name. Steven Yoon. He says he <laughs> is kind of starting on the voiceover. So, yes, it's very slow. I don't know why they're taking their time on Invincible. Yeah, because animation supposed to be fast, right? Don't worry. Like now? I think so, especially that kind of animation. It's not like Pixar. No, you know? it's not. So, and you're just like recording quick. You can like yeah. record like everybody separate. You get it all mailed in. and Like they're not capitalizing on like, not. the popularity of it. They're like Because we're, we're forgetting. This is what happens in society. People forget. You got to yeah. like boom, 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 hit them yeah. with that. Uh, Steve says, congratulations to Jeremy. Thank you so much, Steve. I will let him know that you said so. We appreciate you. It looks like you switched formats because I can see your name now. Yeah, we can uh, see it oh, now, Steve. Damn it. Guys, when I, uh, apparently you can go to StreamYard and give them permission to, uh, show your name. So I fucking forgot to post that link when I posted <laughs> this, but I just learned that. I want to give thanks out to the Ox Father, uh, Zach, uh, from, um, collecting uh weekly uh who let me know that he puts it on all of his so you can give permission to see your name through the group i just gotta learn to post that and then you guys nice. can go do that probably one time and it probably does it forever nice. so um uh, other than that double any other pop culture socially uh, relevant well, news well this past sunday rcw had a show mm. and uh they had like a little meet and greet with uh deborah mcmichael uh i don't know if anyone remembers she was during the attitude era uh managed the four horsemen uh and she had a little meeting grade. It was kind of a last minute thing. Uh, I had my daughter with me and I kind of just dragged her along. <laughs> and, you know, we went there and it was just kind of like in and out. And I had her sign my old Raw magazine. Uh, this is Deborah, what she looked like. Uh, let me see. And as Jerry used to say, at the puppies! 23 years ago. No, that was the king. Sorry. 23 years ago. She put, to Adam, love Deborah. Dude, I love that. And I saw your pick, Double A. Yeah. So great, man. Super nice lady. Uh, I didn't even know you were great. going. I didn't know either. Yeah, she looked beautiful. I didn't know either. Uh, again, it was a really last-minute decision. Mm -hmm. It was kind of on the opposite side of town where we're at. Have so. we been to the venue? Nope. I've never been there before. 
I've only been when they're at Rotama. And where's the other spot? Oh, and right here in Kirby. Mm. Somewhere on Kirby. And this is the first time I've ever been to You this know, when spot. I started with RCW, they wrestled at a church right here off of Goliath. Oh, Goliath, yeah. yes, I remember. Yeah. yeah. So it, she was super nice, super sweet. Again, she still looked great for like 62, I think she is now. Yeah. Oh, 62, wow. 63. She still looked great. Dang, she's yeah. a fox. And I get it. Super nice, super nice. Good thing. crowd for her? Um, I don't know. I went in and out. There was a line for the event. So, okay. But I don't know about her. Okay, very nice. Hopefully she did. Okay, she is an important piece of the attitude here. Absolutely. And shout out to Brandon Oliver for bringing all these great yeah. superstars of the past, man. And then he's having an event July 3rd, and Rod Simmons is going to be the guest. There. Yeah, that was so. the new announcement. Damn. So uh, that'd yeah. be one we should yeah. maybe think about going well, to. I, I met him. You met him. Oh, that's right. We did meet him. Yeah, yeah. so I'm, I, and I don't have that WCW heavyweight belt, that version that he has. So it kind of sucks, yeah. but pretty iconic. Yeah. yeah, I remember, I think, because I met him and Bradshaw like separately. And then when I met the one of them, they were together again. And I was like, no, I'm good. I met him already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's like, like oh, I really don't have anything together. like worthwhile for Ron Simmons, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I don't I agree. have anything. Uh, I don't. Ha he never really won a title in WWE. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like, well, the, except for his tag, tag belt, I don't yeah. have that. Like in acolytes tag and uh, and of course the uh, AOA. Right? Yeah. Um, uh, Joe says uh, puppies, and he also says Good Shepherd shows. Yeah, that was at the Good Shepherd Church. They <laughs> rocked. They did indeed. Damn, Joe, we might have been at that together. <laughs> Steve says. Hanging out outside tonight, guys, and the bats, bats are, are flying. flying tonight, guys. Oh, very nice, uh, uh, Steve. Uh, watch out for them, the bloodsuckers. Yeah, speaking of bats, I saw Morbius is available now to, I guess, buy on yeah. digital. Oh, and so. how about that? We both saw The Northman. I love The Northman. I thought it was good. Great movie. Um, I loved it. I, I flipped out. I felt like my testosterone was going up yeah. as the movie was going. Yeah. It was. I thought it was pretty hype. Now it wasn't as action packed as I had hoped. Jessica's dad said the same. He said he thought it was a little boring, a little slow. Oh really? Uh, yeah, because oh, he I wanted just more. Really enjoyed the story. Yeah, I like. I, that's what I liked. I liked the story. It was, a it cool was Hamlet story. Almost. Uh, yeah. Almost. Yeah. You know? There was that. Yeah, and yeah. I felt like, oh man, I guess I'm not that familiar with Hamlet because the the twists in the movie were to me like, <gasps> like what the fuck? Yeah. Like no. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, well acted, great cast. Yeah. I, I mean, it. Alexander Skarsgård. And then the Andy, man. I just, it was, like, for me, because, yeah. you know, Jack Kirby, Stanley, they're really ones who got me into, like, the Norse mythology. Yeah. So it's because of them I started digging deeper into the Norse mythology. And all that stuff just, like, really gets me, oh. you know? Uh, Steve said he lost sound. Guys, Steve, how are we now? I'm going to just keep talking. You let me know if we came in or but, out. yeah, I love that. I love that whole show. I mean, that whole movie. I loved it. I saw it two times. So, yeah. About badass. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, we, we actually, the... The digital copy was uh, to buy it was twenty five and the rent was twenty so we're like I just told Jess let's just buy it. I mean, uh, I'm buying it on Blu-ray though. I am buying it. Oh yeah, Blu -ray. I'll check yeah. it out again for sure. Uh, guys, if anyone says us agrees that we lost sound, please let us know. Everything here looks good to us, uh, so I don't know why that would be. Uh, let me check our internet and everything else. Uh, but from what I can see, we're good. But guys, if we have lost sound again, please do let us know. Um, not our intention to lose sound, but uh, doesn't look choppy. We look like we're okay. What do you think? Uh, well, uh, Steve said he lost sound. I hope that was not for everyone. Um, but if so, please let us know in the comments. Um, but probably more reason to, without further ado, get moving. Right, oh, double. He said he got it back. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay, wonderful. And Joe uh, says just y'all coming, coming through. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Joe and Steve. Thank y'all for always letting us know stuff like that because sometimes we don't know. We don't. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So we're gonna we want to cut to the chase tonight. We want to get to it because we want to get you in and get you out. Um, not that we don't enjoy hanging out all night with you guys, but um, tonight we want to talk about something that's a little bit out of the norm for us, I guess. I mean, somewhat, we, somewhat. 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 Um, Unless you know us. You know, you know I, I told my coworker today, John, he asked me, he said, you know, what, what are you doing tonight? I told him, he said, oh, so you guys don't just do comic book stuff. And I said, oh, no, no. I said, no. it's a pop culture show. I said, and pop culture just means popular culture. So if it's popular in the culture, then we would definitely talk about it. And sometimes things that are popular in the culture are not comic book related. Uh, a lot of them are these days. Um, but we've done multiple sports episodes and we do consider sports to be part of oh, the pop time. culture i yeah, mean like that's time. some guys are just Oof. sports guys they yeah. never read a comic book or watched a marvel movie in their life but they love sports and you know we happen to kind of 
if there was like a Venn diagram, we would be in that middle section where the, mm -hmm. the circles cross over between like the jocks yeah, and the nerds, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's, that's why we're going to talk about what we're talking about tonight. But even if you're not a sports fan, even if you never have seen a single basketball game, you can watch this show oh, man, on HBO definitely. Max and yeah. you can truly enjoy, enjoy and appreciate it. Because number one, it's a great, fantastic TV show. I put it in the write up. It's well acted, mm -hmm. it's well written, and it looks fucking marvelous. And it's fun. It's fun it's to very watch. Fun. You know, again, we have it here at the bottom for a reason, but we are Spurs fans. The show that we're talking about tonight is Winning Time on HBO Max, The Rise of the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, Double Eight, let's just start out, man. Tell me your history, your thoughts and your feelings around the 1980s Los Angeles Lakers. I mean, you're born in 86. Yeah, I mean, they're just, you know, they look like a fun team. They were a hungry team. They had some of the best players ever. They had one guy that was considered a top three player in Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, you had one of the, probably the most exciting point guard, mm -hmm. Magic Johnson. Mm -hmm. And you just had probably the best looking coach <laughs> in the 80s. You oh know, yeah, slick back hair, fucking suits, Armani suits. You know Pat Riley. I mean, man, he was just so slick. Well, I mean, the Lakers, it, it, Showtime, Showtime yeah. Lakers. When you think of, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but when you think of uh, just great coaches in history of all sports, Pat Riley's up there. Yeah, he's in the yeah. top, probably maybe even top ten. Yeah, you know no, I mean? say just, five. You know, oh five. shit, there you go. Yeah, of all sports, of all time. Oh, of all sports. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about all sports, but I mean, in basketball, top five. Okay. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, another thing is, is like, uh, I told you this before we started showing, uh, film, uh, recording, filming, recording, what are we doing? Um, you know, my dad is a guy, uh, who grew up, uh, in the sixties and the seventies. And when the Showtime Lakers were shit hot, you know, he was out, uh, you know, um, he spent some time on the, on the West coast and uh you know he went to some games you know over there or whatever you know he was in the marine corps uh he went to uh basic training in san diego so it's like you know that that's you know i guess not far uh again forgive my geography but yeah i mean it was like the bulls of the 90s mm -hmm. everybody was a lakers fan of those lakers you know what i mean he has a one solo picture of him in like a lakers shirt or whatever lakers or know? boston depending on where you were yeah depending on where you were man i mean like they were the team to watch and we talked about this several times before this. It's like growing up, I would go to your uh, house, your mom and dad's house, like every weekend, and I would hang out and play with you and you guys, you and and your your you know your middle brother Will, who's been a one time guest on the show. Uh, and on his wall, he had a Magic Johnson mm -hmm. poster, and he had a Magic Johnson jersey hanging up. And we are all the biggest Spurs fans you will run across. But that was like out of fucking respect, man, that you had that shit up that he had. I think he hung that up and it was badass. There was the yellow magic jersey. I remember mm -hmm. that. Uh, you know, he hung it, you know, with the, with the, the name Johnson showing out. up. Yeah. yeah, the name mm -hmm. on the back. And a great poster of magic doing like a pass. Not like a layup. Oh, it's like a layup. layup. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, you know, magic is one of those guys that is revered and you will talk about in the greatest yeah. players of all time. Probably what, WA top 10? Yeah. Easily, sure. yeah. I mean, and then you know, you mentioned Kareem earlier. I do believe on our episode about greatest of all time, you and your brother Boy. Did... No, I I picked him as the greatest. Who did uh, Boy uh, take? Jordan. Jordan. Oh, did, Jordan. So we were yes. were we three yes. Jordans to one yes. one mm -hmm. Kareem, uh, which I just learned today hearing this, of winningest basketball players though. I think he is the winningest. I would think so. Basketball player. I would think Kareem. So. Yeah, it's, it's I think high school, college. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if he got a gold medal or not, but did he ever play on an Olympic team? I'm not too sure about the Olympic team because in '72, I think it was only letting college players, mm. and by that point, he was yeah. already well into yeah uh, basketball, his basketball career. But, so, but yeah, but then you get the NBA championships, obviously. So oh, you yeah. have like, I mean, like if yes. you look, I mean, we'd have someone have to look that up. But who is the winningest single basketball player? It may indeed be Kareem, and. Um, you know, yeah. So, 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 tell me some, some more uh, double A. I mean, like, you know, you grew up. Yeah, we... So, like, we, we love sports. Uh, me and my brothers, uh, CM here. Sports. We we love <laughs> sports. We we love really good documentaries. Uh, 
you know, uh, I've I've talked about this show on the thirty four thirty how I love the Four Falls of Buffalo. Mm-hmm. It's just a really good show on Buffalo. I'd love uh, to cover that, by the way. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, man, you know, thirty four thirties. That's all I'm about. I've watched a whole episode about the Washington Redskins, uh, and I'm not a big fan of theirs, but I love that thirty four thirty that they did of them. You know, men that want their ladies to get into sports. Uh, or guys that want their friends that aren't into sports to get into sports, they should put one of those on. Yes. Because yes. it's they're so fucking well they're done. Great. It makes any sport team interesting. I saw 30 for 30 just on the Detroit Pistons, the bad boys, uh, just all about them. And so when I saw the trailer for Winning Time, first off, I love the way it looked. It looked rainy. It looked like a 70s movie. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, it was about the start of the Showtime Lakers. And I, I was asking everybody... Hey, are you going to watch this? Are you going to watch this? This looks really cool. It looks, you know, it, it's about the, you know, the start of the Lakers, how they drafted Magic and how they, you know, went off from there. And everybody was kind of like, eh, maybe, maybe. I was like, okay, okay. Saw the first episode. I called everybody I knew. You got to watch Winning Time. You got to watch Winning Time. It's fucking great. It's did you hilarious. get your brother boy watching? Or yes, he was already I watching? did. No, oh, I had okay. to after a few you, episodes. You mentioned it twice on this show. Yes. And, you, and you mentioned it to me and like everyone knows kind of now that we... Famously, kind of text back and forth throughout the week yeah. or whatever about a variety yes. of topics. Uh, and you had asked me again, and I was like, no. And I really got a chance to watch when I was, unfortunately, just had that yes, doctor, the dentist, the, the dentist yes. thing. Yes. And I was waiting like six hours yes. and she was getting like a. Which was perfect. Th- it turned oh out my to gosh. be perfect. And I was like texting you back. Like, I was like, yeah. this show is the shit, dude. It's yes. so fucking fun. Yeah. It's so funny. And it's like, also, like, again, as I got deeper in, I was like, man, I had a lot of. Joe, if you're still out there. There's a lot of moments. He is, he's yeah, I saw we kind of chopped up a little bit for a second there, but there's a lot of tearjerker moments. Believe me, brother, and they're they're good ones, uh, especially a sports father and a sports son. You know what I mean? So Joe also says, "SA is a basketball town, no doubt." Uh, he says he mentions Showtime. Obviously, he says, "Dude, I love the '80s Spurs." Late '80s. Yeah. Oh, That's late '80s Spurs. Yeah. yeah David comes totally. In. Uh, in regards Maybe to Magic, the greatest point guard, possibly. Of all time. Uh, and then Joe says, uh, it the show sure, starts crazy. Yeah, it, it has a, starts crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And I had forgot about that opening because yes. the show gets so good. Yes. It kind of starts on a really grim note. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you want to get right into that, Double A? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So, episode one, guys, again, uh, it starts in 1991. And you see, you know, what, what we learn now is uh, Magic Johnson. Uh, his retirement his retirement yeah uh, Magic Johnson played wonderfully by a virtually unknown actor Quincy, Quincy Jones I- right? Quincy Isaiah Isaiah uh, okay. Quincy, Quincy Isaiah. Isaiah yeah and uh, I mean if you're any type of even a moderate sports fan because this was like world global it news was. it was huge because yeah. this was a killer at this mm-hmm. time you he know, was announcing his retirement why double A because he had caught the HIV virus which turned into AIDS and uh Pretty much at this time, it was almost like a death sentence, mm-hmm. almost. So everybody was pretty fucking scared. Uh, no one really knew the depths of the disease yet. This uh, was like a so wake-up call for a lot of people. It was a huge wake-up because, call. Because remember, it was thought it was, of as like, you it know. It was really uh, the shutdown of the 80s, pretty much. Right. That whole mentality of the 80s, it was kind of like, okay, it's got to stop here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it, it there was a lot of you know negative connotations with you know the Bad. AIDS. It was uh, just like you're strictly virus. gay, you're homosexual, you right? Body. Right, and this was like the wake up call to like this guy that was been on our TVs, this guy that is a uh-huh. champion, this guy that is a sports a legend, yep. sports hero. By that already. time, yeah, one of the greatest players ever. Easily, it was easily said ever that. at that I point. I mean, you know, uh, it was like what the fuck just happened? It was like someone turned the volume down. And and, like, and if, you, if you see, there's another great documentary on HBO Max. It's uh, Magic and Bird uh, Rivalry. Uh, and it says that it knocked Bird off his socks. It wow. really made him depressed. He goes, he hadn't felt that depressed in, when, since his father had passed away. Had killed himself. That, that was the only time that he had felt that kind of level of sadness and it just it really hurt larry and he said that after that he really didn't feel like playing basketball anymore shit that's fucking heavy yeah. really. i'm already choked up <laughs> rizzo in the house says hey what's up rizzo uh, what's up Riz? Man, says, NBA here, but... was hot at this time early 90s class yeah i mean man we were all watching basketball remember really? sam i would we, we, we were going everywhere watching the basketball games. i i can tell you this when i got back from california where my dad was stationed i did not want to live there <laughs> My dad was station. Yeah, and I got back to San Antonio, station, yes. the greatest city in this free country. I can uh, attest to that. He was stationed there. <laughs> um, 
we would hang out. You, you guys, you and your brothers were showing me, you know, NBA inside stuff mm-hmm. with Ahmad mm-hmm. Rashad. I'd yep. never watched that. Loved Ahmad Rashad. They Rashad's had show. Yeah. volumes of NBA cassette, video videotapes, VHS tapes, and we would play them over and over and over. And I was like, I couldn't get enough. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't. get enough. It was so many great players at this time. Yeah, Michael was finally breaking out. Oh yeah, you know, Magic was towards the end, but I mean, it was Magic. It was still Larry. We had David coming mm-hmm. in. We had Charles coming into his own, yeah. Patrick Ewing, Akeem Olajuwon. You know, we had all these great players that were just busting out. I mean, you, know? you guys truly familiarized me with some of the other stuff going on in the NBA besides just who I knew and I liked because I can remember being in California and us having field day and having to make our own jerseys with glue, whatever, which was just a white T-shirt <laughs> that you put. And I made my myself number 50, and my other classmates were like, oh, cool, Robinson, like, you know, that's pretty yeah. dope. And they were like, you know, like, you like San Antonio? And I was like, yeah, that's, like, where my family's and, from. And then the nicknames, too, man, right? I mean, it was Air the Jordan, Admiral, the Admiral, Magic, Magic, you know? Dr. J, King, the Dream, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was a dream shake, you know? Yeah, seriously. Because I got back in, into San Antonio about 93. I mean, so the, you know, the Bulls man. had already won a couple. And, I mean, of course, even in California. Because I remember talking to your brother Will on the phone and being like, hey, man, are you like a Lakers fan? And I was like, no, I'm not really. And then he's like, well, who do you like? And I was like, well, I really like Michael Jordan. And I like the Bulls. Because, again, it's well, nice. Everyone liked the Bulls. I mean, it know? was kind of funny, right? Because, like, Frank, I remember when he was in Seattle. Mm-hmm. Our cousin Frank, he, you know, another veteran. Uh, he was a Seattle Sonics fan, right? You yeah, know? and he was at that time with Sean Kemp and Gary Payton, you know. So it's kind of crazy because he was kind of in Seattle like during like he grunge. Was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was. Which yeah, is fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah, Frank is the biggest Cajunto guy, Frank, and I'm like, if you're out man, here. Yeah, salute to you, Frank. But damn, man, shit, Frank could have probably caught Nirvana. <laughs> and he probably did. He oh, was probably like, yeah. fuck, damn. Man, you look like a bunch you're, of bones. You're, you're blowing my <laughs> fucking mind right now. I'm like, wow, yeah, but I remember fuck, Frank, man. like, all of a sudden when he would come down here, he'd be like, yeah, Seattle Supersonics are my team. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, you know, they lived there, so. Let's see. Uh, what the fuck here? There's a bunch of comments that I just rolled yeah, in. Yeah. Uh, sorry, guys. I don't uh, want to offend right anybody. Joe says, I was a card collector back then. That was the other big thing, the card collecting. Nothing man. like a, a bunch of silver hoops for you there. Yeah. Uh, uh, Remember the, the rookie cards? Oh, uh, and, with the phone. Oh yeah, the, the new rookies, the cards, <laughs> they'll be on the phone with the hats. Joe, if you want some of those silver hoops, I got some trades for you. We can talk about. Uh, uh, Steve says eighties were fine, but the Spurs owned the nineties and beyond. In my mind, at least. Absolutely, Earth fan. absolutely, Steve. You're a hundred percent right. Yeah. But Steve, I would love to hear your opinion. What did you think about the eighties Showtime Lakers, like Magic Johnson, Pat Riley, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Did you have thoughts and opinions on them as a Spurs or fan? Even the Spurs too. I mean, Iceman was still around. Artis oh, Gilmore yeah, was right. there. You well, know, like, Johnny Moore. Obviously, for us, you know, in the two thousands, there was like a real oh, deep hate yeah. of the Kobe no, Shaq no, Lakers. That was. There's no mm. love whatsoever. Fuck those guys. Yeah, despite this I know setup his and everything, Kobe. But I think he would respect that. I would say, fuck the Lakers. Rest in peace, Kobe. <laughs> but he does know that we hate him for a reason, which is uh, legit. He wants to be hated. That yeah. that guy thrived on it. That. Thrived on it. Yeah, thrived which on is it. what we miss about basketball. Yeah. And Double I want to say that real quick. I have been so fucking bored with basketball, man. Yeah. The NBA to me has been yeah. like everyone's like, like oh. You know, he's my buddy. I forgot yeah. that I loved basketball, that I have counted it as my number one sport for years, mm-hmm. especially as a Spurs fan. Because in these recent years, man, it has just been it's so bright. Been sorry. This show, Double A, ignited that yeah. spark in me again. I was like, oh my God, I miss this right? basketball. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? They should make NBA players now watch this fucking show, <laughs> man. I'm like, this shit is what you should do. And for all the Lakers fans out there, I cannot wait. So they do the LeBron HBO Max series of the Lakers called The Fall of the Lakers <laughs> Losing Time. I've been saving that joke for a week, so I got that for you right there. Uh, Joe says, I told you, Californian. Uh, come to California. That's my army hey, right there. Hey. Uh, also, let's see. Uh, shit. shit. Oh, uh, Facebook user that says, yes, it's a very good show. Uh, identify yourself. I want to know because we didn't know anybody else that watched it. So oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I, yeah, identify yeah. yourself, Facebook user that says it's a very good show. Uh, Rizzo says, "Yeah, Joe, me too. I miss my cards so much." Uh, now that's the inside stuff. Now that's the inside yeah. stuff. Yeah, Dream Team too, man. Yeah, that was around that time Ooh. too, in the cl- early '90s. I mean, you don't have that Dream Team without Magic. I mean, you know, of course, you've also got Bird and Jordan. But and that's what made Akeem it right there. That's David. kind of what made it right there. That's Just a fucking those three names. That's Murderer's Row right there. Yeah. You know, double A. That's a hit squad. Yes. yes. I don't think there's a, an NBA team 
or even a made up team on earth that could have beat that team no. anywhere at any time. Even at that time, when some of them were aging. Yes. No. Yeah. You're not beating those guys. Uh, uh, Rizzo says the inside stuff was the shit. Absolutely. And Joe says every team had a top player. That's absolutely. what we miss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Rizzo <laughs> says, couldn't stand Detlef Shrimp with the Sonics, too. Uh, Detlef Shrimp? Man. Shrimp wow. shade was not something wow. I expected. I know. I got a, I got uh, a Silver Hoops <laughs> card for you, Rizzo, if you want to yeah. trade there. Uh, Joe says, games at the Hemisphere Arena rocked. We have that distinction, right? Having yes. seen games in yes. all three. I have seen yes. games in the Hemisphere. Uh, Joe says, Lakers hat Worthy, who was great, and Cooper, who was a great defender. Yep. Uh, Rizzo says, Kobe, second coming of MJ. Uh... Joe says the Dream Team documentary is very good. Must watch. I watched it, Joe, like probably already 25 times. Where is that one at? Uh, they show whenever on ABA channel or I don't know. It, Joe, is it streaming anywhere? I don't know if it's streaming, but whenever it comes on the NBA channel, I fucking watch it. I need to watch it. I love that Dream Team. I, I want to watch that one. Because more. it shows even in 92, he already had the AIDS, but they were still fucking competitive. It was Magic's yeah. team versus Jordan's team, and yeah. they just couldn't wait to just fucking go at it. Go other. at it, man! Man, man it was that. Great. I miss you, that. You see the shit talking that they do to each other. They're playing horse. They're doing all this kind of stuff because man, it's great. And no one even looks at Magic like he's sick. Oh, Nobody yeah. like yeah. everybody's playing super hard, super competitive. He's saying David to go after fucking Malone. He's saying, you know, he's saying every, you know, all these guys. He's saying Clyde yeah. to get after Michael. I mean, man, he's just like fucking get on him. What know? a captain, man. I always love the scenes, though, when they show Dream Team stuff. They, they inadvertently always show that shot of Jordan being, I think it's in Spain or Italy. Yeah, and there's the, that big Jordan yes, banner. Right? Yes. And he's even looking up like, yeah, he shit. Looked up, and yeah. you're like, wow. Like, can you imagine that? I'm like that here. Yes, you know what I mean? Like, that's fucking yeah. wild. So absolutely love that. Uh, Rizzo and Joe says he think he, they think they can find <laughs> it on YouTube. I and love it. Joe says shrimp was great on NBA. Damn, NBA jam. Wow. And just as we go from Detlef Shrimp Shade, now to Detlef Shrimp Love. Yeah, and Rizzo says, yeah, that's why I couldn't stand him, Joe. He was great. This is not the dichotomy of basketball that I thought I was going to get tonight. And then Joe says when they went to Coop Coach. <laughs> wow. Okay. But, guys, we're talking about yeah, the Lakers so, in a sense. Yeah, so anytime, you know, as CM said, it kind of starts off, you're you're about to see the announcement, which I don't think you do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it kind of flash forwards back to 1979. Uh Lakers are kind of like, uh, I don't know if they were in a slump or not. Maybe they were. Kareem's not really, he's there, but he's not really fucking there mentally anymore. You know, he's getting his points. He's right. getting his rebounds. Whatever. You know, um, rookie owner, Jerry Buss, is attempting mm -hmm. to buy the Lakers. Um, he really wants to draft Magic Johnson, number one, not Larry Bird. He wants to draft Ma uh, Magic. Um, we get Jerry West, who looks like he's burned out from coaching. Uh, having uh, some shit fits every now and then. Yes. You know, uh, Which, Double A, now, I originally wanted to, originally, guys, we were supposed to have Double A's brother, uh, boy, Ayala, also on the show, who you guys have seen before on our NBA Greatest episode, uh, Greatest Players, and then on our, our NFL episode uh, on here before, because this is another guy that is a huge basketball purist and a huge person. And I told Double A, if you guys are both on this show, it's gonna, this show is going to be called, like, did that really happen? Did that really happen? Because that's what I'm going to be asking, because... Guys, as much as I love basketball, like my history is not always all there. So I was literally watching Winning Time with like not knowledge of what was gonna, what outcomes were, and I was wondering, I was like, is this real or is this for TV? Like I was literally wondering, like even when it came to people's names and and people who they were, I was like, was that real or is that a real guy? Or, and I was like, I wanted you guys to be in the room with me so I could talk to you uh, both and ask you those questions. So. Even as right now, as we go through the episodes, I'm going to be asking Double A, like, like, did, was that a thing? Was that, is that for real? You know, so so just prepare yourself for that. And again, I was looking at my phone only because I wanted to get the episode count. Eight? Ten. Ten. It was ten, ten episodes. episodes. Okay, yeah. thank you, Double A. I have my notes here, but I I actually remembered them. But uh, I didn't have that written down. <laughs> so go ahead. Carry on, Double A. About yeah, and the... it's just showing kind of like, you know, Bus is trying to buy the team. Uh, the original owner is kind of like giving him a little hard time, but he's trying to get the team. He really wants the Lakers. He really wants to try this. Mm -hmm. uh, he really wants to own the NBA team. He wants to own the forum. You know, he just thinks it's great. He just thinks it's marvelous. This all this stuff. He just thinks it's great. It's in Hollywood. It's yeah, in LA. You know, and Jerry Buss played fantastically by John, John C. Riley. I'm a huge John C. Riley fan. But I mean, this is something like totally different than I used to seeing from mm -hmm. him. 
You know, and he killed it. He did great as yeah. Jerry Buss. I mean, I love Dr. him. Dr. Jerry Buss. And, uh, you know, of course, his comedic stuff with Will Ferrell, you know, Step Brothers, um, uh, fucking Talladega Nights. But if you ever watch him in, like, um, Magnolia, he's, it's kind of a more serious role. He's fantastic in that. He's good in uh, Gangs of New York, his little role in Gangs of Gangs New York. Gangs of New York, yes. Yeah. Uh, he's just great. But this, I mean, man. I see Emmy coming this man's level. way. It was a different it's level. It's a different level. level. He's great. It's comedic as well. And you know what they do, Double right? They break the fourth wall, yes. right? So he talks yes, to the camera. Times, he talks yes. to you multiple times. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, too, is what I learned is I also listened. They had a companion podcast the same way that Peacemaker had a companion podcast, which is a great I thing. I guess that's that, an HBO Max. -ing. Yeah, it's HBO Max, -ing, yeah. which is great because they're only 30 minutes and you get like a lot of behind the scenes uh stuff and interviews so i listened to like the first maybe six episodes of it and it was great it's by the one of like the uh writers of the show uh and i forget what his other role is executive producer i think but um you know he was saying that they one of the guys found this really old camera and they started shooting on it just to see what it looked like and it, and they were like oh right away when they saw the footage they were like oh man it's that fucking grainy yes. old footage yeah. so there's so many parts of the show that look like that they you know that when they do these big wide shots yeah. of the city it looks all grainy yeah. and like how you'd watch old tv and man it just helps you get it really sucked does. in right it reminds really does. you of that yes. because this is a time that we did grow up in right yes. the way we were in yes. the 80s you know mm -hmm. what i mean so when we watch tv sometimes it fucking looked like that and that's one of the things that grabbed me when i saw it on the trailer that's actually one of the things that got me Mm -hmm. to watch it to want to watch it so uh yeah so you know like like double a said we've got bus he's wanting to buy the team you know it's kind of funny this part of the plot is that he doesn't have all the money and uh this owner this current owner of the fucking lakers is this real fucking prick seems like he, a prick he's a racist very, like, asshole <laughs> you know and again and i like it too because race does come into play in this but it's kind of done in a really good yes. way where it's not heavy-handed yeah. yeah uh it's just the times it's they just kind the of times. show it at the times. It's just yeah. the times. And which is kind of sad because we're saying that in the 80s. And if you say that in the 70s, if you say that in the 60s, if you say that in the fucking 40s, it's like it's been No, but the it times, wasn't you know? until like about the 2000s that people actually started saying stop. You know what I mean? Like that's when we started hearing that. Like stop. Agree. You know? Agree. Um, but yeah, I mean like there is some really great scenes with that, you know, shitbag owner before Bus gets in there. And Bus, you can tell, just wants to win, right? Yes. Like he, he, yes. He's a guy kind of soul searching, right? Mm -hmm. when he wants something to maybe fill in this emptiness in him, and he thinks this is it. Yeah, I, I think it does become it eventually. You know oh, what I mean? I'm he's sure not it does. Sure. It becomes a family business almost later on, much much later on. Yeah, uh, they don't show it in this show, but it, it really does become a family business. Well, well let's not bury the lead here. Though. We do know there's going to be a season two. Yes, yes, there's going to be a season two, but I don't know how. Like I know the family gets involved. I just don't know when. The family really does or get how, yeah. super involved in it, or how? And I obviously, hope Jeannie is mm -hmm. the owner now. She yeah. is the the owner of the team now. So. Yes, and her character is a prominent character in in this series as well. <laughs> this is uh, takes over. Uh, double uh, double A. Uh, you want to read some of these no, comments? No, we're that came in. Oh, we're, we're good. Okay, right. we're good on comments. Okay, yeah. sorry. I thought it was more deadlift shrimp talk. I uh, wasn't sure there. Um, so, yes, when she introduced her to, she's trying to be like an intern almost. Kind of trying to learn some of the inside and mm -hmm. outs of the business, you know, so, yeah. So, an interesting fact that I just read on IMDb is that one of the uh, people behind the show is Adam McKay. And if you know yes. that name, you know that that's a guy that was, for many years, a partner with Will Ferrell. They did a lot of the funniest Will Ferrell movies. I think they did Step Brothers. I think they did Talladega Nights. They did, I think, even the Anchorman stuff. But I think they kind of famously had, like, a falling out, and I did not know this. And I don't know if this is fact. This might just be hearsay, but what I read on IMDb was that the falling out was because Will Ferrell wanted to play Buzz. Oh, wow. And McKay, uh, they, they split. I know McKay went and did some more serious work, and it had good good uh, okay. responses okay. to it. And that he's the one that instead chose wow. John C. Riley. Yeah, so that's, that's very, that's I don't a, know. I think that's a better choice, honestly. Uh, yeah, I think so. And too. that's it's, probably why he's like, uh, I'm going with John. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> it's hard to not see certain people a certain way. And, like, you yeah. just see Will Ferrell kind of as Will Ferrell a lot. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and John C. Riley, I mean, again, he immerses himself in yes, this role does. where I'm like, yes, I does. don't know much about Jerry Buss, Dr. Jerry Buss, but uh, for me now, I mean, like, in my mind, it's, like, tied together with, yeah. with this guy. Um, so uh, go ahead, Double A. What else? I mean, like, we've obviously got the that, – that's kind of the, the motivating plot. They're also not sure about drafting – uh, yeah, because, I mean, everyone assumes Larry Bird's going to be the number one. Mm -hmm. You know, despite Magic beating him in the finals, the college NBA uh, title game, uh, 
Larry Bird is still kind of like the the golden goose. Yeah. You know, and no one, like, they kind of see Magic as a distant number two. And people know? are kind of having that conversation, right? It kind yes. of shows them in the offices. And it's funny because they show these clips of, like, Magic playing. And it's like, you know, Magic Johnson, blah, 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 his stats. And then it's like, black, 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 black. Yeah. And yes. then it shows, you yes. know, Larry Bird. And yes. it's like, Larry Bird doing all this great shit. And it's like, white, 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 white. It's like, people aren't saying it. Yes. But it's but like. That's, it's there. That's what yes. it is. It's a black guy and a white guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Rizzo says switch to YouTube guys uh, listen because I'm drawing oh draw away Rizzo we want to see some of that stuff brother we appreciate uh, it Joe says his daughter yeah. takes over and uh, says Will might have taken away from it Joe says I agree with you Joe I think Will mm. I, I just don't see him as well yeah. he also says John C. Riley is a great actor yeah. totally agree with you on that I would love John C. Riley again it's just pretty much like the first episode was kind of like just the moves uh, mm -hmm. going on uh, him trying to find the money to make sure he gets the purchase Jeannie trying to figure out if this is what she really wants to do. Uh, Magic kind of playing hardball a little bit on the contract negotiations. Yes, Came yeah, saying I he love kind of that. Six hundred thousand, not the he wants more than Bird. Oh, I you know? love that man uh, he, because he feels like he deserves it. He beat Larry Bird, and we get to meet some of these great actors, right? Yeah. Like we mentioned John C. Riley. We mentioned the young, kind of upcoming, like the unknown, virtually Quincy Isaiah playing fantastically magic johnson this guy is gonna go far i think double a i think so yeah. uh how about this guy that we we know and we kind of really grew to love <laughs> jason, right? clark. jason clark yes playing the very very insane mr the, the logo <laughs> the logo mr class you whatever. know I, and i love this stuff they throw they throw up these word blocks on the screen right so they show they're like jerry west nicest guy in basketball yeah. They're yeah. Like, unless you know him and he's like motherfucker yeah. fuck fuck you know what i mean like you know <laughs> And it's because this guy is so passionate about the sport and the he team, is. especially yes. the team. Yes. He, he loves he the Lakers. He bleeds purple and yellow. You know? To a fault, almost. Yes. You know, because it's almost like his wife is kind of like, fuck, man, snap out of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. uh, and what do we know him from AA? Here I see... Terminator. He's come out in Rise of the... Pl or not Rise. Dawn of the Planet Dawn of the, of the Planet Apes. Apes. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's just one of those faces that I feel like I know yeah, a lot. He had, Pet Cemetery. Yes. He, he you was seen the, him in the, a lot of movies. Lewis of Pet Cemetery, yes. yeah. Um, but he, yeah, he plays John Connor in Dark Fate. He that's plays right. one of the main humans in uh, in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so all that uh, stuff. And yeah, Rizzo. Yeah, Jerry West did not like how he was portrayed. I'm sure none of them are gonna like how they yeah. were portrayed. Uh, they show you know Quincy Isaiah plays Isaiah, uh, Magic, and it's like right off the bat, as soon as he gets to L.A., he's just like having sex like crazy with so many different women i mean it just it kind of leads to the 91 <laughs> it was magic yeah for sure for sure yeah. so real quick on that double let me tell you some of the stuff i got from the, the podcast so this show is based on a book so yes. people are hating Winning, but I'm like, um, it's based on a book yeah showtime showtime by jeff perlman um the writers of the show are a gentleman named max borenstein and rodney barnes uh rodney barnes is who hosts the podcast the companion podcast he does a great job uh, and he says who would not talk to him was Magic, Kareem, and Pat Riley. So he talked to, uh, he says, Wes Matthews and some of the, the other side guys, which he said that's who he wanted to talk to. He's like, I wanted to talk to the people that were watching it. Or like, seeing them. The way we're going to be watching yes. it. Because obviously, you know, Magic isn't going to talk about like He's not going to talk about yeah. room full of hoes, you know what I mean? Yes. So, you know, but as this other guy, Wes Matthews, might say, like, oh, Magic had a lot of women yeah. in his room that yeah. night. You know what I mean? Like, so that's kind of what we want or whatever. Now, Double do you know anything about, like, how are they able to use, like, the Lakers name, the Lakers logos, the, the Maybe players' Maybe it's public names? domain. Maybe public, they were able okay. to use them. Okay. I, I found that interesting. Maybe. Um, but, yeah. Uh, maybe at this point, maybe if you make like if you point out it's fictional, maybe not everything is accurate. Maybe you can use it. And that is a big disclaimer right at the beginning of the show, yes, it guys. Is. It says some it's, of these things have been interpreted, so it's not necessarily, you know, factual. It, it's not trying to be factual in any way. Um, but yeah, so like Jason Clark got like a lot of notice because the way he's portrayed Jerry West, no one has ever seen Jerry West like this, like ever. Hey, you know what? Double H me. This made Jerry West cool. I thought so too. I was, <laughs> this is what the episode where he's like busting out cursing. This episode, I was texting everybody, you gotta fucking watch Jason Clark. He's fucking hilarious as Jerry West. He he's just cursing and fucking throwing shit everywhere. I mean, it's just fucking hilarious. Hey man, I feel for him too because like you know this guy won MVP 
in a game in a he's championship game only, you lost. He's the only MVP on the losing side of the NBA finals. I mean, nobody <laughs> wants that award, right? Nobody so wants like, that fucking award. I would be like, man, don't even send me that. I'm not even gonna come out and I'm accept. Not, yeah. What the fuck? Fuck that. Like <laughs> That's, that's almost first, that's almost first, gross in its own like off, that's an insult to Jerry West and that was an insult to the Boston Celtics almost. I mean that's just a double insult. Whoever thought of that was like Jerry West needs to win. Come on. Yeah, now. I feel like there was uh, some white exec somewhere that was like, Well, I like that boy, give him yeah. an award, you know what I mean? And I'm sure, man, if I would look at that fucking award, I'd be like, Wow. Like this fucking sucks. Oh, I think that's how Jason Clark portrayed it. Is yeah. that he when was he like, throws out the window. You want to know what I got? This fucking thing. And he's like <laughs> slamming it. And you're like, holy shit. Like, this guy's a really angry guy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so much fun. It's so much fucking fun, man. Um, I would like to think maybe Jerry West will go off the rail sometime. I mean, it's stressful. Yeah. How many times were we were watching Spurs playoff games? Us. Mm -hmm. And we'd be shouting. And oh fucking cussing, just like how we're seeing Jerry West on the show. Yeah. We're fucking cussing. We're throwing shit. We're like, motherfucker. You're fucking, like, Ginobili, fucking Ginobili made yeah. that bad fucking pass. What was he thinking? It was like, we, we see everybody, like, just go off the rail. Your fucking brother boy, who I wish he was here, has literally fired the entire squad. <laughs> yeah. Even in championship yeah. seasons, he's fired Parker. He's fired yeah. Tim. He's fired Mono. He's fired Pop. I'm like, uh, boy, what? Yeah. A, what? He, what? He's been a literal Jerry West. <laughs> Yo, big time. Yeah, big time. And our other our buddy, uh, Ray, that was here, he's like threatening to commit suicide after we lost the 2013 NBA Finals. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a real <laughs> thing there. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, Double A, one of the cool things I wanted to talk about quickly was, and you brought this to my attention, but was the character Norm Nixon. Yes. Is played. Yes. By he's played son. by his actual son, Devon. And, yes. And that clip that I showed you, mm -hmm. it almost looked like him. You remember the finals? Yeah. Yes, I was like, did. holy shit, that yeah. looks like Norm, like the, the, the son. The son looks like him. So one of the cool things from the podcast, again, and I highly suggest you guys go listen to the Winning uh, winning Time Companion podcast after you watch the show. Even they say it. Watch the show for a second. It's only 30 minutes. He says, you know, the Rodney Barnes asks him, you know, the, again, one of the writers says, you know, what did your dad think when you got the role or whatever? He was like, oh, my, my dad's a real cool customer. You know, he's real cool. So he was like, oh, that's cool, son. That's cool. Like, he said he didn't, wasn't like hype about it. He goes, but he didn't expect him to be hype about it. But I'm like, man, I would think that would be pretty neat. You know what well, I mean? because I guess he already knew, oh, shit, they might show some behind some the stuff. scenes. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. <laughs> Definitely true. And I'm sure maybe he asked him to. He was like, hey, man, how was Kareem in the back? How was Magic in the background? Right. You know, how was he as a rookie? Right. You know, uh, how was, you know, this and that? How was Jamal Wilkes, you know? Yes. Probably, like, you know, I want to know what the feeling was in the camp. Yeah. You know? And the writer I'm talking about, Rodney Barnes, who hosts the podcast, if you want to see him, he is in the show. If you remember that, he's one of the guards. If you remember the scene where we get introduced to Pat Riley and he's trying to get in, the guard that's talking to him, yeah, that's yeah. him. Yeah, okay. And, and he said he didn't know that they were going to put him in that role. Okay. He just came in one day okay. and they're like, hey, Rodney, we're going to have you play this. And he goes, that's cool. What I did like about what I heard on the podcast was that it seemed like the people that were behind this show were really big fans of the Lakers and the Lakers lore. And you can of the see 80s. it. That's why I don't like it when the, like the Lakers hate it, obviously. Mm -hmm. But they're missing the whole point. They're they're not seeing all this kind of stuff. It is a love letter. They're yeah. showing them how they came up. This is about them right. becoming the NBA franchise that dominated the eighties. No one likes the negative shit of your life highlighted. But guess what? As us watching it, we're like, fuck, that's badass that you know, Jerry Buss wakes up in the fucking Playboy Mansion surrounded by women. Because guys that aren't gonna do that, like me and double A, you know what I mean? We're like we're like we live vicariously through shows like this where you're like, Wow, that's cool. And you know I what just mean? That, honestly, I've never looked up Jerry Buss before and you know he's a doctor, he was a scientist, you know, that worked for the government. You, you know, know what he they tells don't magic about that. why he was oh that's right, he does yeah. say that, yeah. Yeah, when he's talking to magic and it's kinda of like, Wow, you know, this dude was a super smart genius. He was but he made genius. his money at real estate though. Yes, he did real yeah. estate, but still he owned the Chrysler the fact building. That he had that in the background yeah oh yeah i mean who would have who would have left that first off you know <laughs> to to do something like this you mm -hmm. know what i mean it's a complete 180 absolutely um someone that shows up in the show as jerry buss's mom amazing actress mm -hmm. sally field oh, yeah that was a big surprise she when wasn't I saw her. she wasn't aunt may yeah. you know so that's a high high kudos but uh, I mean, real quick, joe says i want to say there was a clip of youtube of jerry west flipping out at games 
Uh, <laughs> then Rizzo says, dude, it was rough, but geez. Yeah. Uh, and then Joe says, dang, I didn't know the actual guys didn't like the show. Yes. Yeah. Kareem had a problem with it. Magic had a problem with it. Uh, you said Pat Riley. Well, uh, well know, they just uh, didn't talk Jerry to him West for the book. Jerry West had a yeah. major problem with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, they so. just, you know, I mean, and no again, one it's kind of showing a side that you just didn't see. And this is another reason why we're covering this, right? Because this is entertainment. We're talking about the show here. We're not talking about our love for the Lakers franchise by any means. We're talking about that we both really loved and enjoyed this show, Winning Time. And it was a fun and fantastic show that kind of, you know, maybe... It's kind of like when you watch fucking Inglorious Bastards, right? I don't think that's how Hitler died, is what they showed us there no. in, in Inglorious Bastards. You know, it's like when you watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I don't think that that's really what happened to Sharon Tate. You know, again, you know, and you've heard me talk about it in our football episode, but I I binge-watched the six-parter Joe Montana documentary. I'm not a San Francisco 49er fan. I hate the 49ers. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to see this doc because uh, it was Joe Montana. I would like to jump on that and say that I also hate the 49ers. <laughs> so, that anyone out there cares to know that. Um, let's see here. I also want to talk about... Um, the let's see i talked about adam mckay sally field here i talked about oh, okay let's see okay uh i want to hear a little bit about what are some of your favorite performances in this show because i have two that really stood out to me okay uh do you have a favorite favorites oh yeah like you mean the actors himself yeah 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 i mean i love jason uh siegel mm -hmm. oh, i love adrian jason brody great adrian uh, oh adrian Bro guys adrian brody's in this if we didn't say that already adrian brody plays pat riley and he fucking rocks and he rocks. he rocks he fucking rock i'm like dude didn't he win an oscar already for something else yes he did yes because he kissed halle berry he should That's win right. an oscar for this <laughs> and man the way he portrays pat riley i'm like wow i can see how pat riley could have fired these guys up honestly oh yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and then when I was watching him in the role, I was like, I'm seeing the look, you know, like, oh, yeah, that, that nose yep. and that, that yep. tan it's skin. It's starting to come and, out, yeah. I'm like, shit, all right, this yeah. is a good casting, It was man. starting Great to come casting, out. Great casting, yeah. you know? Uh, um, Quincy Isaiah was, I mean, I can't think, the dude almost looks like magic. <laughs> I mean, it's fucking crazy. It's uncanny. You kept saying that to me. You kept saying, man, there's moments I'm watching. I'm, like, I'm like, wow, that looks like magic. <laughs> you know? And then again, you know, of course... We all know, even if you interviewed Magic Johnson a thousand times, and, and, and if he was being 100% honest, he might tell a story that's going to maybe not be like cinematically exciting or whatever. But they take conversations with him and Cookie that are really great. Again, um, I want to give credit to the gal that plays Cookie because she is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, Joe says, Forrest is mom. And then Joe says, dude, they, did they mention Kareem getting beat up by Bruce Lee? No, they did not mention Oh, yeah, you know what? They, they, they did, actually. They kind of show him briefly, yeah. like, on the set. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's that yeah. movie? I forgot the movie where he... Oh, uh, shit. And it's a good one. I do like that movie. It was Mr. a really Fury? cool plot. I can't remember, but it was a good It was a good plot. Game of Death. Yeah, with Game every death. level, it's a different... Yeah, and he's at the top, and he's giving him the, he gives him that kick, boom, with, like, and the he looks the scary. Footprint. He looks scary, because he's, like, way taller than Bruce Lee is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, speaking of him, speaking of, of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the, the gentleman that plays him... Doctor Game of Death, Game of Death, Joseph. Yeah, Game of Death. Doctor Solomon Hughes. So this guy is a doctor oh, that shit. plays him, or whatever. The guy hasn't acted very much, or whatever. They mainly okay. got him because of his height, <clears throat> but they were kind of helping him along through. Man, the guy. I don't know how much Cream was actually like that, but this guy, uh, to me, he's stealing a lot of the scenes in the in the show. From the little bit I've read about Cream, after he was traded to the Lakers, it was kind of like some. Up and down seasons, you know, he kind of lost his kind of love for basketball, like the way you kind of show it in in the show. Mm -hmm. uh, not really feeling it anymore. Not really feeling the love of the game anymore. Uh, and it 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 did it did help when they drafted Magic. Magic did bring a joke to Kareem that he needed. Yes. Uh, was he really a dick to that kid on airplane? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know if he said fuck off to the kid or and not. And they show that great scene, which is awesome, by the way. You know, I I don't know, but he he you know he did believe. Was it the nation of Muslim? Was he a Muslim too? Yes, he was a Muslim. Okay. The nation of uh, which Islam, apparently his Islam. father ha had a problem with. They show that too. Mm -hmm. They show the problem that you know he hated that he changed his name from Luau Center to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah, they do a great job with that, right? Yes, Going they into do. his yes. past. Um, 
you know, very successful, one of the greatest college players ever, won a ring like in his second year with the Milwaukee Bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, just dominant player, just super dominant player. Yeah. Uh, you Your know, pick for greatest of all I time. I still think he's the greatest of all time. I mean, you can't deny the man playing 20 consistent years of just being a, a, a essential piece of yeah. a team, you know. Uh, he plays great. I loved it. He's very mellow. He's very out there. Well, not out there. He's very isolated from his teammates. They all show for respect. They, they show right. the respect. Hey, Cap. Oh, hey, yeah. Cap. Hey, oh, Cap. Yeah. But he doesn't give much back. No. There's not, like, a lot of give back. No. You know? He's kind of, like, emotionally checked out. Yeah, or he's just, like, it's it's his job. He clocks in. He clocks yes, out. And that, if, that's a great way of putting yeah, it, though. He so, treats it just like that. Uh, Joe says, there's a movie that I liked back in the day called... Oh, Forget, Forget Paris. Paris. Yeah. Yes, but then he cream out of the game. <laughs> yeah, that's a great, great movie. I think Dave's in that, too. Yes, he is. Yeah. Instead of the Phoenix Suns eliminating us, it was, uh, he shot the ball after the, bell, the ah, whistle. okay. So it didn't count. Yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> Fuck you, Billy Crystal. <laughs> no, no, against Charles. Oh, shit, yeah. nice. There yeah. you go. And Dave says, we'll see you in San Antonio. That's right. <laughs> yes. I love that. Um, but I like this performance. Uh, and he and he gets better as the episodes oh go along. He starts he opening better? up. Double A, I think I told you earlier, and I was like, if they ever did, and they should fucking do Winning Time, The Rise of the San Antonio Spurs, I know he probably doesn't want to be typecast, but I would 100% cast Dr. Solomon Hughes as Tim Duncan. Oh, sure. I think that he would play a icy, icy motherfucking Tim Duncan <laughs> to a T. I was like, in fact, I was watching him as Kareem and getting Tim Duncan vibes. And I was like, man, this guy's like, fucking good. and I'm like, man, Tim was like Kareem in a way. Like, they were like kind of the same, man. We're like, like, I think Tim thought of basketball like a job too. You he know probably I mean? did because like, he wanted to be like, a swimmer. Yeah, and he liked video games. Yeah. And like, like this is like work. Like, even when he won rings, it's like he celebrated very like nonchalantly. <laughs> and it, like, you know, like I was just like, like Tim didn't, and I love. He wasn't Michael. David. He wasn't he David. Wasn't David. He wasn't, and even David though. But I mean, like you know. No, but David let his emotions come out. Right, David right. David was a very emotional guy. Your brother you know? famously talks about like you know like that. Was it the second time Jordan won when he's hugging the trophy on the floor and like crying? Yeah. And I love MJ. You know, Michael Jordan to death. But, you know, your brother's like, ah, that's bullshit. He's fucking, like, that's bullshitting or whatever. Like, I'm like, come on, man. The guy fucking, you know, that's amazing. You know what I mean? But it's like, that's not Tim. And that did not seem like that was Kareem either. You know what I mean? So. Well, Kareem already won it. And he was very, if you see the Milwaukee Bucks, Kareem. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, he's very animated. Oh, nice. Very, very fucking animated. So you need to watch, like, Milwaukee Bucks, Kareem. And I bet in that squad he was really doing the heavy lifting. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he was. I mean, he was... He was fucking going up against Will Chamberlain a lot of the times, you know. Wow, so nice. So he won on the east and the west. Yes. That's pretty yeah, sweet. Yeah, he dominated on both sides. So, uh, Joe says real quick, uh, oh, they never do the Spurs. There's not a lot of drama. Yes, they will, Joe. And Joe says, David, for many, many years, tried and tried and couldn't get over the hump. I think just the story alone of us versus the Heat in the LeBron time with oh, the law, yeah. the, the sweep, and then the, the comeback, that's a great sports story. You know what I mean? And if you get into the drama of, like, you know, Parker and Barry's wife, and you, oh, you get into the drama. Yeah, which would be a winning time. Yeah, yeah. You, you get into the <laughs> drama me? of, like, Tim getting Fucking ripped off by the financial guy <laughs> or whatever. Like, there's there's some drama there, Joe, I think. You know what I mean? Like, you know, again, you make it good. You make you make Hollywood will make it good. Joe says know? Bulls will probably be the next best, uh, next movie. That's fine. I, I mean, I'll watch that. Let's see who they cast as Jordan. I'm, I'm very interested in that. But yeah, um, the he played a great cream, great great cream. great cream. Love again. Do, the guy's name is Dr. Solomon Hughes. Never heard of him. Apparently, he like Quincy Isaiah. He's a virtually unknown. Uh, but man, what a stellar job! And again, my casting for Tim Duncan. If you had asked me a thousand times, I would never come with anybody. But now I know. Who would play Tim Duncan in my Spurs movie? And it is this gentleman right here. Uh, I hate to make him play another basketball player, but hey, it is what it is. Um, Double A, another uh, performance that I loved, and Joe, I'm glad you're here for this. Uh, the the gentleman's name is Mr. Rob Morgan, and he plays Irving Johnson Sr. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And man, his scenes with him and his son, his scenes with him and the, the young boy that plays the young son, boy... I I was uh, I mean they're they're so good they're magic so very good magic uh, on real docs has has mentioned his dad 
plenty of times saying how he worked two jobs most of the time uh, and even got a, a plaque from the the dealership that he was working at. He worked at a car factory. Mm. Uh, getting, Chrysler. Yeah, getting like a like a, a thing, a plaque or something saying for never missing a day of work in like 25 years or something. Like he went in and out, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, he was a hardworking guy to try to provide and encourage Magic to yeah. go out there and be the, be the best. These know? scenes with him and, and his son are so juicy. Again, it's it's Rob Morgan, the actor, as Irvin Sr. with you know Quincy Isaiah as as Irvin uh, Jr. Magic Johnson. But that first scene, right, Double A, where they're going to eat with the 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 then owner of the Lakers, uh, that guy Cook, Jack Cook, I think. Jack Cook, and, there you go. Yeah, and yeah. and Bus is there, but he's not quite the owner yet. And he orders this fancy meal, right, Double A? And Magic is like, what, the what is this or whatever, it? you know what I mean? And there's a there's a moment, there's, this man is, this man, Rob Morgan, again, playing Irvin Johnson's dad, Irvin Sr., there's these moments that like, where he's acting so much and not saying a damn thing. Yeah. Because there's a moment he's like, he's like, well, you know, come on, boy, blah, blah. And he's looking like he shoots his eyes. You know what I mean? Like, this motherfucker. But then there's that great moment, right? Again, John C. Riley coming in clutch. And then he's like, he's like uh, oh, you work for Chrysler? Yeah, I used to work doing this, whatever, uh, you know, in, in a field or whatever. Man, I never slept better. You're so tired afterwards. And he's like, I heard that. Like, like he's trying to, like, save it because this other owner asshole is ruining the thing with yeah. magic. Yeah. But he's saving it with the dad, Jerry yeah. Buss, you know, uh, John C. Riley is Jerry Buss with, with Magic's dad. Then later they get back to the room, right? They offer him magic, four hundred thousand, right? Yeah, which and, is a huge amount. It was a huge amount back then. I love that. There's so many scenes. I love, I love this scene with him and Solomon Hughes later yeah, on as Kareem, as Kareem yes, later on. Yes. But but I love this scene first with him and Magic early in the in the early episodes where he says, "You got four hundred thousand in one hand and nothing in the other. Mm -hmm. That's not a hard choice." And he tells him, "Get your head out of your ass." Yeah. You know, because Magic's like, "Well, I know I'm I'm worth more." You know, like he knows what Larry got. You know what I mean? And he's like, "I beat him." So you admire that, but at the same time, you see where the dad's coming from, where he's like, yeah. like, dude, I work two jobs, so yeah. you could play ball, so you could yeah. go to college. Like, it's, it's fucking so real, man. I, I loved his performance so much. Mm -hmm. I was like, this guy, Rob Morgan, is really great. And I, without me knowing, he was one of the interviews on the podcast. Like, oh, they picked random. Okay. I thought cool. they were going to hit, like, all the big people, but he was one of the people. And uh, it was such a funny thing because he says, I got into acting because I was chasing a girl. And I only uh, auditioned because, you know, she was going to audition. And the movie was Contact. Oh, and shit. he said okay. he got it and she didn't. Oh, damn. So he's in, in contact, whatever. And apparently a funny thing about him is like he has like a pet cat that he walks like on a leash or whatever. And everyone's like, yeah, we'd see you walking that pet cat around the set. But man, those scenes are all of his scenes. I love them. I was yeah. like, this guy is so good. Yeah. And he's doing so much with his eyes. And he's the opposite of magic, right? Where magic's in. Yep. They show him smiling so much. Yep. And he's not because he's like fucking like, yo, man, yes. like, this shit is real. Like I worked hard. You know, to get you here, it's really great. Magic is just so confident in himself mm -hmm. in what he's worth and what he can do. And I know? love that. Yeah. I do love that. That's always shown in Magic Johnson, just the <laughs> confidence level. It's always up there. Did, did you like Double A, this scene in, like, I think it's episode four, where, you know, Magic's like, oh, when it's going to be me? It's gonna be magic, and it goes into that like animation. Yes, yes. And it's almost like great. Fat Albert animation, yeah. right? That was great. Yeah, the I get my numbers too, and it, you know, it's all these women giving up the hotel <laughs> yeah. keys and everything. And he's like, "I'm a giver," and like shows him, like going down yeah. on some yeah. chick or whatever. Yeah. You're like, "What the fuck?" Like, yeah. it's wild like that, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, but I gotta tell you, oh, way, like, as I'm going along in the show again, it was so fun for me because I n I know none of these things. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm like, man, who who did win in '80? I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, you know for me, like, I, I already remember. know like that whole decade because it just fascinated me. It just fascinated me how much one team in the West pretty much dominated the '80s, even if they didn't win all the titles. I mean, they went there eight times. Or what about the story of just like a rookie coach, a rookie <laughs> too, owner, a, yeah. ro a rookie, you could say star. Yeah, it is. You know. Yeah. I mean, like, that's got to be super fucking rare. You yes, know? it is. Yeah. The whole episode that's called, like, Who the Fuck is Jack McKinney? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> what? And I was going to, like... I and I kind of had to do my research on that, too, because I didn't know who Jack McKinney was. You know, but I when I looked up with him, 
Pat Riley and Paul West said have both said he's the creator of the Showtime Lakers. That is crazy to me. Yeah. I mean, that's a name I never heard. Uh, and by the way, I want to say his wife is played wonderfully yeah. from the gal from Mayor of Easttown. Yes, the friend, yes, right? Yes, the friend. I, kept I was watching. trying to think who the I, hell I know. she was. That's what I was doing. I was watching. I was like, where do I know her? Because she is. Yeah. She does a lot of acting with her face, too. Yes. Where I'm like, who is that? I love this comment from Joe. Joe says, sold me, Chuck. <laughs> I yeah, told he you, says brother. The only reason I haven't watched was I was trying to watch with the wife. Good luck, Joe. I, you know what? <laughs> you, you you should watch it with your boy, man. Your, your oldest. I I think that you guys might have a lot of moments, man. Really, I really do. It's really cool. And it, just as a sports guy, I know that basketball is not his sport, but I think as a sports guy, especially where he's about to be, I think you guys could get a lot of enjoyment out of it. I really, really do. Um, and maybe you can pass him some 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 good life lessons or whatever there too via like Irving Senior. But but go ahead, Dovola. You were saying. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was like, who the hell is Jack McKinney? I was like, I don't remember his name ever being mentioned, mm-hmm. but yeah, they've said he was, the, he was a coach. Um, he said in the episode he was with Portland with mm-hmm. Dr. Jack Ramsey. He was an assistant. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was an assistant with Jack Ramsey, who is another all-time great coach, uh, legendary coach. Uh, he coached Portland's only championship season with Bo Walton. Mm. Uh, so I was kind of like, okay, who is this? So I looked him up. He only play, he only got to coach thirteen games, but it was his system and the training camps that pretty much Paul Westhead just went with it. Mm-hmm. He he Paul Westhead came in and he became the coach, but he still implemented Jack McKinney's offense. So the and his system. So the accident that takes McKinney out was all real. Yeah, it was real. That was it was real. a real bad, tra- really traumatic incident. Yeah, bad, real that's bad. That's crazy, and that's a really like. Like, the way the show plays out, it's kind of like one of those situations, right, where, like, they say when they film reality TV, they film it, like, they film it every day, every day, every day, every day, but then they only cut together the dramatic parts, and then the, the dramatic thing is at the, season, the, the end, even though they're like, oh, well, this happened before that. Mm-hmm. Like, what? That's all out of order. But they're like, well, that's to sell the show. Like, as I'm watching this, I'm like, this seems like the drama would have had to unfold it in this order for real, and it did. It did, It's just yeah. one of those situations, you know? Yeah, so Paul Westhead, who is played by Jason Siegel, and he does a great job. Oh, my god! I've seen Paul Westhead, the real Paul Westhead, and he's not too far off from the way he looks. And, and I'm a huge Jason Siegel fan. My girlfriend is a huge Jason Siegel. I, I love, you know. This was a different kind of Jason Siegel that we yeah. saw. You very know? Di- very nervous, very anxious. No very... comedy, I can't think. No, really. no comedy. All I got from him was, like, pure anxiety, yeah. where I'm like, this guy does not want to yeah. be in this situation or whatever. In fact... They talk very little about his basketball acumen. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's kind of there as like a supporting yeah, just cast to, you know, to, yeah. You yeah. know just uh, an assistant coach. Yeah, to Jack. To and, Jack. and then, yeah. you know, I mean, like, even though when he's in trouble, he's leaning on Pat yes. for stuff. He's like, I, yes. I need you. Like, I Which, need you. You know, at this time, you know, Paul, they're showing Paul and Jack getting the whole Lakers ready. I mean, he, he pretty much knows what to do. It's just that Jack is a coach. At the same time, they're showing Pat Riley's kind of like life too. At the same time, played by Adrian Brody. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pat Riley has been retired, he's not really doing anything. You know, he's just kind of playing ball in, this, in the parks. Um, he misses that feeling. He misses that, you know, just being around basketball. I love the introduction, Patrick James yeah. Riley. Yeah. On the screen, it's like you're like, oh, shit. And I was kind of confused too because I was like, man, did he really look like this? Like, yeah, I was like, and sure enough, I looked it up. And yeah. yeah, he did look like he wasn't that. cool. He wasn't at slick that back, nothing. Uh, you know, him and his wife, you know, they're going through, but he's he's saying that he really needs to get back into some sort of basketball. Mm-hmm. Uh, he wants to be a color commentator. Uh, and he, you know, they're like, yeah, I think he just wants to be anything, just at anything, that point, anything. You know, which I have to imagine is a sucky feeling. You know, you know, and and the, you know the. What's his name? Chick Hearn? I, mm-hmm. I can't remember. That's Chick Hearn, name. very okay. famous. Yeah. Yeah. So he's pretty much saying, Pat, Pat, you don't have a voice. You sound like, you know, you sound like a, a you know, a homosexual. Yeah. Like, that's pretty much what he tells me. You that's sound like a fairy. Me. Yeah. Uh, you just don't have that basketball voice. <laughs> you know, but Pat Ray's like, just give me a chance. Let me do some tape. Let me show you, you know, blah, blah, and blah. And those parts are rough, right? The, yeah, they are, because I'm like, wow, he's you know, talking to Pat Riley like that? You know, like, I've heard Pat Riley talk. Yeah, and this guy's like, yeah, you're a fucking announcer, man. Which, he, which he, they show Shit Hearn is kind of like, 
he drinks a lot and he, he you know does a lot of fucking back yeah. comedy. And Pat Riley is a champion. Like he he won a ring. You yes. know what I mean? And yes. it's like what the fuck? I love these comments from Joe. Joe says Celtics Lakers were great matchups. He says, Throw it down, big fella. Oh my gosh, one of our favorite lines of just all of us guys hanging out, Joe. You would so fit uh right in with us in the uh the old uh garage at, at Double A's old house. Uh what's that one say, Double A Ricky? Uh, they could have Riley in the Bulls show, Bulls show as well. Yeah, that is absolutely true. Yeah, but you know they're showing Riley. He's kind of coming up, and he he does get the job. Uh, eventually, he does become a color commentator until the accident happens with Jack McKinney mm-hmm. and Paul Wesley kind of goes to him. It's like Pat, I really could use your help. Yeah, can he be an assistant coach? Pat's kind of like. Man, I don't know because if this thing doesn't work out, you know, I quit I lost, my job announcing yeah, I just or whatever. Quit the job that I just got, which hired. is going shitty for him, unfortunately. It was, but still, it's, it's kind of like you know, he's a he's around the game. Mm-hmm. He has a job. He's around the game. Sure, sure. Uh, this might not be a permanent thing, you know. Yeah. But you know, Paul's kind of like, I really need you, Pat. I really need you. He convinces him, and he becomes an assistant coach. Which uh, man, to Paul Wesley, you know, I mean, look, we all know now. There's a, I know enough basketball lord to know like i'm like who this man is and who he's going to become so it's like yeah. wow you're seeing like the beginnings and of what's that. great though is like this shows like the the chemistry between the two men and how they play off where paul's trying to be like a really good coach but pat's the one that's getting them fired up most of the time right sam absolutely is that the way you saw it kind Abs- of? oh yeah absolutely yeah. like it's it's two, diff- two different dynamics totally you know um one of the things i wanted to talk about real quick double that we might have like kind of glazed over is just like you know, early on, and we're we're not going episode by no, episode. No, we're no. just kind of talking about no. our general enjoyment of the show. We highly suggest you guys go watch it. HBO Max, Winning Time, uh, again, the rise of the the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, how about um, <laughs> the character of uh, Claire Rothman? Oh, yes, uh, wonderfully portrayed. Yes, again, look which, at the it actress's looks like name. she becomes a huge part of the Lakers franchise. Yes. Uh, really helping with the... Gabby uh, Hoffman. And she plays Claire Rothman wonderfully. She's great. Um, she becomes a powerful member of the Lakers franchise. Just, mm-hmm. you know, kind of... She's the one that kind of gets all the numbers down. She's the one that kind of gets all the acts together. Outside acts, outside of uh, the Lakers, you know, to play at the forum. Th- Throughout Buss's kind of like initial year here, he's kind of leaning on her heavily. Very, like, hey, what's going very, on with the money? What's yeah. going on? And one of the cool things I like is that when he first meets her, he says, you know, she brings in the drink cart, right? They're treating her like a, a coffee Bad. girl. Like, like the women, you know, from the 70s, secretary. Yeah, yeah. You know, they even just... tell her like, hey, I'll do a couple of buttons to make him like be interested or whatever. And she doesn't do it. Yeah. She does put her hair down, but she doesn't do that, you know? And, and when she goes in, the first guy, which is Buss's like, Right hand man, right the the guy that's like his mm-hmm. uh, money guy, and he and the guy's like, oh, let me get a drink, honey, and he's like, get that one yourself, whatever. I know who this is. He's like, you're Claire Rothman. He talks to her, and he goes, you're the first person to put a musical act in a in a in a in an arena. And they don't say who or whatever. So on the podcast, they reveal that that story is true. The person that she first booked in the forum was Aretha Franklin. Oh. Nice. So very, very, very fucking nice. cool, man. I loved that. I was like, oh shit, that's fucking badass. And that is a true story that she's the first person to book a musical yeah, act I mean, in the arena. Just becomes a really important part uh, again of the of the Laker franchise. Uh, towards the end of the show, she gets a major promotion. Yes, major, does. major promotion. Mm-hmm. I know, love that. She's unheard of. Probably yeah. around this time, you know. Which is a lot of cool things about, you know, Dr. Jerry Buss, that the way they portray him in this anyway, Double right, is that like doesn't care about race, doesn't nope. care about if you're male or nope. female. You know, he's like, I, I wanna win, I, I wanna need have the people the best around stuff. Me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like and I and I gotta make up this money that I've obviously put in. Oh, you know shit. I mean? So Wow, Joe, that that just blew my mind. He said Gabby Hoffman was the little girl on Uncle Buck. Wow. Wow, no wow. shit. That is holy very, very shit. That is her. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, I know. That That's her. why I was just like, she didn't wow, change. Wow! Holy shit! <laughs> Great fucking pull, Joe. Bye, Steve. Wonderful. Have a good night. That. Okay. Okay. Good night, Steve. We appreciate you being here, brother. Again, take care. Thoughts and prayers with you yeah. always, sir. Wow, wow Joe. Damn, he, he just fucking. <laughs> I'm thinking of her fucking face. I know, right and now, I can and I'm see like, it. Oh my gosh, I can see that it. is so yeah. her. 
Uh, and she's still wonderful. She's yeah. wonderful. Double A, we didn't talk about this, but we're early on in the series, episode two. We get to meet the great Red Arbach. Yeah, Michael Chiklis. Michael Chiklis. <laughs> I, I, felt like, I felt like he was like, this is. I was born for this they, role. They kind of overdo the weight. He was never that big. Red Arbach was was a good sized guy. I mean, he was never that big. So <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why they kind of kind of exaggerated. I think Chiklis on his normal weight. Would look like Red Arbuck, you know? Yeah. Just yeah. his normal size. They could have you know? trimmed him down. Yeah. 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 I don't know why they do it. Puffing like... the cigar. Just, I mean, man, it's, uh, it, they do such a good job, right? They do. Just being like, man, these are the rivals. These are the guys. And who, who knows? Maybe is. that's the way Red was. He had every right to be arrogant. He was, by that point, arguably the greatest coach in the NBA had he ever He tells seen. him, right? He does, I'll do anything. I'll, I'll cut your heart out to have one more banner in the rafters. Like, I'm like, fuck it. This man shit, this won. Is, yeah, this man won eight brutal. straight. Yeah. Eight straight NBA titles. Yeah. You know? That's fucking nuts. I mean that, and it's. I think it's portrayed very well. I liked uh, uh, Michael Chiklis so much as Red Arbach. It was funny. Me and my friend were talking about the scene in the Boston Garden, mm. where he gives a, a gift to Doctor Jerry uh. Buss. And I'm not gonna lie. I kind of laughed hard when I first saw that because this was kind of like the attitude back then. Yeah, you kind of did shit like this, and you didn't feel sorry about what you did. Right. It was kind of like a fuck you. Um, they're playing Boston like in December, <laughs> and he invites uh, Jerry Buss uh, to come. And I don't know, he gives him some shitty seats, like real shitty seats. Real seat. shit seats. And he has some, uh, one of the ushers kind of bring him up a gift, and it's like a fucking rotting onion. And he's uh-huh. like, what's this? And he's like, it's a vegetable, just like your coach is. I was like, man. But, but this is obviously after Jack McKinney. After he's had his accident. And he's in the hospital, like, in a vegetative state, so you're like, Woo. Yeah, I was like, like oh fuck, my. man. Yeah, and like, then they show Ray with the cigar, like, yeah, <laughs> like you know, we're in, he's up in his high seats, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, you ain't sitting down here at the fucking garden. And you're like, fuck. But you know, again, these guys were the kings. Oh. Yeah, un, un, yeah. It's like when he walks into the forum, he's like, yeah, I haven't been here since we beat you. Yeah, you know, a long time ago. He's like, I remember you guys had the balloons up, cook at the balloons, and. I wasn't you know, having that. I was. He goes, the hot air stayed up there. So, Double A, let me ask you real quick. I want to rewind a little bit. Joe says, oh, that's fucked up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's fucked up. Double A, like, again, this is my moment to have one of my, like, is this real moment or what was real? So, they very quickly kind of glaze over the fact that, you know, Jerry West did win one. Yes. Right? Just one. Just one. And who mm-hmm. is it against? Not it, the was, Celtics. it was not against the Celtics. Who the hell did they beat? Uh, it wasn't. It was in New York. It might okay. have been New York. It was like the second championship ring for Will Chamberlain as well. But oh. it wasn't. It wasn't Boston. It was, and they like make no mention of Will. No, they at don't. All no. in this. No. So I mean, like, yeah, it's very interesting. But they do mention Elgin Baylor. If you remember, they're looking for the coach, and that's right. That's right. That's Elgin right. Baylor oh. was a huge part of the Lakers for Jerry West. Speaking of that, I have this written down because I did not know any of this. What I know about this man is that he one time coached the Spurs. Tark the fucking oh, shark. Yes, yes. I didn't know that this guy was a fucking Vegas mafioso. Uh, yeah, mob time like, oh, motherfucker. Shit. Yeah, I was kind of like, uh, what the hell? And I'm <laughs> like, we let this guy come to San Antonio. Like, what the fuck? He was a legend, though. He was a legendary coach. They pretty much imply in this show, and again, it's a show, but they pretty much imply like he did not go to L.A. because the mob was like, you're not going nowhere. Yeah, it was against the Knicks. Jerry West beat ah, the Knicks. There you go. There you go. Okay, nice. Um. Which were a tough team in the 70s. They won two titles in the 70s. I was trying to think who was so on they were a those, tough team. those Irving Knicks. Walt uh, Clyde Frazier, Earl the Pearl. Earl the Pearl, uh, right? Willis Reed. Yeah. yeah. Damn, that's a tight squad right there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so there's a little moment in here where they're talking about, you know, the Lakers getting Tark the Shark from UNLV. Yeah. You and know, if you the don't Rebels. know him, he's always a coach that is fighting the, the towel. Always. And, again, he coached the Spurs. And I'm just like, and I'm like, oh, shit, Tark the Shark. And I'm like, I'm like, what? Was this real? I'm, again, I'm having a, was this real moment? Like, I'm like, damn, I need to call, you know, double A and, and boy. And um, it pretty much like the mob. It's kind of like, you ain't going nowhere. Like, we like betting on your games and betting on you and all your shit. And that. You're not going nowhere. So that, like, ends pretty quickly or yeah, whatever. 
But like what I know in actuality is that when did he coach us? Double A Tark. He's, Actually, he's Joe cool. says that Jerry uh, Tarkanian through. Yeah, it was crazy that he coached here after his UNLV run. So yeah. Well, he still came to the NBA here in San Antonio. So, you know, without actually saying it, there's a little bit of ties. I mean, look, Buzz didn't have that much time. Jerry West kind of screwed them up in the show. In mm-hmm. the show, it kind of looks like Jerry West kind of screwed him over with the coaching situation. And he was just trying to look for the best coach he could. Uh, there, was, there was not a lot of options. It's about a few weeks before uh, camp, training camp and a little bit before the playoff, I mean, not the playoff games, the regular season, uh, he was trying to look for anyone. He was available. Uh, he had a lot of scandals, apparently. It shows in the show. Uh, maybe him bribing some players to come play for UNLV. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, so he had a lot of scandals behind him. But, yeah, just like CM said, they pretty much said, no, uh, he's not going anywhere. Uh, and that's when he kind of just finds Jack McKinney, and that's how Jack McKinney got the role, the role of the coach. Uh, I guess he did a good interview. He brings in Paul Westhead, and they start running the the Showtime offense. He wants a faster, uh, uh, faster pace. He makes them do, you know, runs, you know, like crazy. He wants them to get physically in better shape than the other teams. Uh, so Jack McKinney ended up being probably the best option. I don't know if Jerry could have taken him to an NBA Finals. Maybe he could have. I don't know. Um, NBA is different than college. We've seen a lot of college coachings, uh, not make it very well, uh, in the NFL or NBA. Um, and they usually go back. Uh, so... Perfect point guard to run it. Yeah, he was, uh, Magic was the perfect. Him and Norm Nixon, uh, Joe, it looks like they show, they kind of switch off uh, point guard. I don't know who was the point guard most of the time. Uh, Norm Nixon had that job down. It shows in the show. Uh, Maybe Magic played shooting every now and then. Uh, Norm maybe had played point. Maybe it was opposite sometimes. Uh, Nah, Jerry never made it away from UNLV. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think so. Maybe it was the best option that he didn't get him after all. So, oh, sorry guys, thank y'all for the allowing me the levity there to have a bathroom break. Um, one of the things that they were saying uh, on the podcast also that I heard the companion podcast was that uh, Magic was a true six nine. Yes, Kareem. Yes, seven two. Yes. Uh, obviously, you know, not all these guys are the actual heights or whatever. So they were like, how do they do things to make them look taller? Uh, real quick. Go uh, ahead. Joe says, who's the dude that magic plays in the party? That is Norm Nixon. Joe, that's the one I was telling you that he kind of had the job as point guard. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he, and he felt threatened when magic came in. Cause he's like, why are you guys joining? Why are you guys drafting the point guard for it? Right. I'm already here. And another cool thing about that, Joe, like we said earlier, is that that actor that's playing Norm Nixon is being played by his son, his real life son, Devon Nixon. Yeah. Plays his, he gets to play his dad, kind of like the Ice Cube thing. And, yeah. Uh, the yeah. Uh, uh, O'Shea Jackson. O'Shea, thing. Yeah. O'Shea gets to play his dad. So, uh, but what they were saying in the podcast was that they use a lot of platform shoes to make certain guys. I would look think taller, so because he, you know. it's going to be hard to find. Right, people right. that size, and, and that you are good, a good actor. And I mean, you've got to be like a double, you know, a double. Uh, yeah, because as there. good as like Quincy was, like they really never show him playing like basketball. Have you never noticed that? Really? Yes. They never really show the games too much. All right. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about, we, we kind of talked a little bit about, you know, Jason Siegel playing Paul Westhead mm-hmm. or whatever. But one of the things Paul Westhead and we kind of anyone here that's probably watching still here, so. It's, we know a little bit of what's going to happen in our own minds as we know the man that Pat Riley becomes, yes. uh, you know, which doesn't, you know, leave Paul West out a lot. Yeah. But one of the cool things about him, distinctions that I learned was that uh, he is, I think, uh, the only person to ever have won an NBA title and a WNBA title. That's right. That's right. He the made WNBA the transition over well. there. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, pretty cool distinction. That was for him cool. Whatever. You know, it's just he never had most success after the Laker run. Yeah. I dug uh, him. I like I liked the the uh, Shakespeare stuff and him quoting, you know, once more into the breach. Yeah. You know, my friend. And then, you know, you got, you know, Adrian Brody, Pat Riley, like, let's fucking kick their ass. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, yeah. <laughs> Which, 
that probably makes a lot more sense yeah. to them. You know what I mean? So you can't go quoting <laughs> Shakespeare necessarily all the time. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, uh, they always show the player's face is like, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> yeah, Joe says a 6'9 point guard. Yeah, yeah. and again, Which early on, yeah. yeah, early on, that's one of Jerry West's problems. He's like, the ball has to travel further when he's dribbling from his, I guess, from the floor to his knee or whatever. Yeah. He's like, it's more easy to, like, I guess, get steals on him and all that or whatever. But, of course, nobody moved the ball like magic. No, nobody did. Golly, it truly was, was just, uh, magic. Yeah. And they start to display that, right? When he yes. in practice, he's doing these the passes. The passes, yeah. And, and Which no one is expecting. And no they one's keeps, expecting. They're like, hey, Rook, what the fuck are you doing? You know, Right, he's like, like oh, that. you didn't see my eyes. And the, I mean, I think magic thought was like, if I see your eyes, the other guys see your eyes. Yeah. So I'm going to give it to you when there's no eyes on yeah. you, you know? And I like McKinney's approach to pretty much what you call it, like fast break basketball yes. double. Yes, I mean, the like, fast break. Yeah. It pretty much is like yeah. push, push, push. Yes. You know, he's like, no, there's no, there's no, there's that's not your section. You, know, you yeah. just keep moving or whatever. Constant you have no movement. section. Yes. I, I like that. Yes. I like that a lot. You know, and the guys, of course, they're tired. They're like, we can't do this. And it's funny because when you watch like old NBA videos, like really old shit, like they're kind of like bouncing the ball around slowly, and they're like, you know, moving in these kind of mm-hmm. like what seems like patterns it almost looks like synchronized swimming yes. versus like obviously the game that we have today today where it's like i Very mean fast. it's just yeah. so fast which is one of the things i love the most about basketball is yeah. the speed of it it's like man it's like you know it's just going and going and going yeah. it's non-stop you know and like the, a game can change leads two three four five times in a mm-hmm. quarter i don't know if another sport does that double yeah. a no. you know i mean no. so not that quick um I think I hit all my like note stuff that I wanted to talk about. Um, you know, so yeah, uh, Spencer Haywood, uh, played by Wood Harris. Yes. Uh, if you know Wood Harris, remember the Titans. He's the lead, like you know the the big black black guy that's opposite the big white guy in that movie or whatever. And he is amazing. And he plays this. a trainer in Creed Part Two. Right. Right. Yes, that's right. Yeah. The, uh, but man, how about in this? How they make him? You know, they Spencer show his Haywood addiction. Was pretty rough. Yeah, it was pretty rough seeing uh, a guy like that. And yeah. dang, double A, like when they show these guys like sweating and stuff, and like they're yeah. in the moment, you're like, fuck, I feel it. Like, it man, looks like, nasty. They, they look it like they're like, re- like really nasty. They can't break out, man. Yeah. Like, the shit is portrayed really, really well. And Wood Harris is absolutely fantastic. Um, again, in one of the interviews in the podcast is uh, Dr. Solomon Harris, who plays Kareem. And he said, man, when I heard that I was going to get to have these scenes and moments with Wood Harris, he goes, I was like beside myself. And he said, man, the guy is just so great. They're great teams. Such a Those great scenes actor. are great oh, between Kareem and Spencer. Wonderful. Right and can you imagine this, Double A, you're acting? Imagine you're going in there with De Niro, and you have to play the guy that's smarter than De Niro. Yeah. you got to play De Niro's boss. Yeah. Here's a guy that's been acting forever and is the boss of acting. Yeah. And now you've got to play his. This is what... You know this dr solomon hughes was doing he's got to play kareem that's the cap over this junkie this guy wood harris and wood harris who's been acting for forever and knows acting and he said oh man all the credit to him because he helped me so much through those scenes and he helped me you know be like confident and be, yeah i mean you know and you had to because and it's got to be believable the way kareem they portray kareem is that you know he's a leader Mm-hmm. Seriously, oh, a big leader. Time. Like everybody looks up. To He's the man, the cap. He's you know, the man. captain. You know, that's it. that was his name. You know, the captain. You know, it, it was almost Godfather like in the locker room with this dude. You know. Kareem had been there for so long. He, you know, he knows what's up. He's he's, he's an old school dude. You know? Well, rightfully so. And then not only that, but it's like who he is. Yeah. And what he can do on yes. the court that you've yes. seen. That one scene where he's like, "That's a sky hook," like, and you're like, you know. And and what does McKinney tell him? That'll always be there for you. Yeah. And you're yeah. always gonna have that. Yeah. He's like, kind of create these other opportunities yeah. for other guys, and that's kind of hard, right? To take a secondary role. That's kind of well, what Dave had to do for Tim. Something right. that you're not used to. But then when he opens up, though, the Lakers really become a dangerous team. Oh yeah, dangerous. Oh yeah, and that's I think another reason, Joe, why I think that was again, you know, I'm biased as a Spurs fan, but I think that it would be great because here you have. You have a great player, like a top 50 player like Dave, that is quickly and easily gives the reins over to this rook. Yeah. Like, okay, oh, yeah. now the offense runs through 10. Yep. It's not about me. There's no ego there. No, there is none. And it's 
amazing. Yeah. I think that's an it was amazing great. story. No, it was great. You know yeah, I mean? it, Dave uh, was like, "I'll take care of the defense. <clears throat> you take care of the offense." Absolutely. You know, absolutely. And not that Tim didn't play D because he certainly did. You know, what I no, mean? but Dave was just that much better at defense. Right. Trust me, he was way right. way better. Than, when when people were trying to go up to get a layup or a dunk and David would come in. They turned their ass around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joe says, <clears throat> imagine Bus buying it. Uh, for that compared to what they are worth oh now. Oh, my gosh. But, I again, know. you can credit that to Bus again, of how much they're worth. Yeah. Because uh, he drove the team up. You know, he got them the players they needed. Uh, you know, he, he always made it seem like an event mm -hmm. at L.A. You the, know? the Laker girls. I mean, that's something that they talk about in this show, too. That was I mean, great, too. They, yeah. they cast someone. I didn't know as, that they were a big part of that. I did not know that either. Right. They yeah. cast someone to play, you know, a young Paula Abdul, the first Laker girl, and that whole aspect. They talk about him opening the Forum Club and mm -hmm. how he wanted celebrities there. They cast someone as a young Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholson being a fan. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, Hollywood stars living in L.A. I mean, it's like it's right there. It goes hand in hand and how Bus capitalized on that. You know, he made them part of the L.A. culture, scene, nightlife. Like, it was a cool thing. Because he says it in the very beginning. He's like, the NBA wasn't cool back then. And it wasn't. Uh, and... This show isn't the first time I've seen it. I've seen it on actual NBA tapes mm -hmm. where it says the 70s were just abysmal. Yeah. It's terrible for the NBA at this time. I mean, it was just... They thought it was no, going to fold, right? Yeah, nobody was coming to the games. You see some of the footage in some of these games, and it's embarrassing. It's bad. It's like, it looks terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a graduation or a football game for a high school team, you know? Which it, is, it just looks terrible. Which is interesting because we kind of talked about this a little bit, right? Double A and our 75th about, like, Sometimes the two guys that get compared for what they did for basketball sometimes is Jordan and Iverson because they're like, oh, like basketball culture, basketball style and all that comes from Iverson. And I, I always think it's interesting because to me, I still think it's Jordan or whatever, because, again, we're talking about yeah. how much yeah. Bus and the Lakers did for the NBA, you know, maybe with like, you know, in that era in the 80s. But in like the more TV heavy era, you know, in the Jordan years, it is Jordan that really, you know, like we say, I mean, like, you know, people talk about, oh, when you shoot the ball, you don't say, you know, you, you, you know, you're always like, you don't say LeBron, you're like Kobe. And I'm like, what's funny is that people forget that are like, well, that's what you say now, but you used to say yeah. Jordan yeah. when you're shooting it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, the, the brand being on everything, yeah. the Jordan shoes, I mean, like the whole thing is like, it's King Michael, you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, Joe brings up a really good point here. Uh, Sam, he says, bro, the NBA Finals were taped at one point. That's how much no one was seeing it. The highest rated game was the college game between Magic and Bird. Mm -hmm. The college game the was college. the highest rated basketball game. Because it was not even the, the best finals. facing off. Yeah, not that's the interesting. the NBA Finals, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, Amy in the house says, yo, yo, yo. Amy. Amy in the house, swish on them fools. She says, MJ all the way. Uh, love it, sis. A very uh, no, but it, it was true in the broad statement regarding and, basketball, and they kind of show like David Stern later on, kind of like he has he's his, pretty prominent, right? Yeah, they have and, someone cast as David. You Stern. can already tell he has a plan going. We got Bird on the East. We got you guys on the West. We kind of want to show you guys more. Mm -hmm. Uh, Amy says, uh, what's your T-shirt? Oh, it's Wolverine and Cap. Great tea. Love that tea. I complimented him twice already. I was like, so. and if anybody wants to buy me a Christmas gift, there you go. Uh, but yes, great t-shirt. Uh, double. A. Yeah, so Stern already kind of saw. He was like, you know what? This is, you know, and they mentioned it too on that mm -hmm. clip too that, you know, when they win the title, they say what a great year it was for the NBA. It was a huge success. The NBA Finals, like the greatest we've ever seen. Yes. So they're already like, they're already seen. Okay, we can do a lot with Magic and the Lakers. Yeah. And if we pre feature Larry Moore and the Celtics, well, we can we can get the NBA going. We can rev it up a little bit more. I mean, you got to think about it, right, Double A? It's almost like, you know, you're asking yourself to be in the running in professional sports with MLB. Yeah. The NFL. Which, at, at that time, baseball was huge. Right. You know, right. maybe bigger than basketball. Yeah, it probably was. Oh yeah, <laughs> I would imagine maybe even bigger than football. I would imagine. I don't know. I don't know, but maybe. Maybe, maybe it was. You know? uh, I don't know, but man, you know, it kind of plants the seeds where Stern is kind of like he's seeing what it can be, what we can do to get this out of our rut. Yes. You know? uh, the guy, I don't know his name. Maybe Sam can help me. Uh, the guy who plays Larry Bird. 
<laughs> you know, I don't have his... He does his a book, great but... job. <laughs> that guy's fucking fantastic. He, he just talks shit throughout the time that he has his scenery, you know, and there's like a... There's like a, a scene at the end. You remember seeing when he's mm-hmm. at home yes. watching the finals. And like I, I'm guessing his brother, that was supposed to be his brother, but he's making <laughs> some like racist jokes. Yes. And Bird tells him, he goes, shut the fuck up. He's you know, there. He's there. I'm not. I'm here. Yeah. You know, and and after Magic wins, what did he show Bird doing? After Magic wins the title. He goes out. He goes outside and, and, and starts, starts practicing. The guy's name is Sean Patrick Small. He um, does a great job. I mean, they make him look like a real hick. All the yeah. way through, just... but but he's also like there's no racism in him. It's no. all about no. winning fucking sport. I like when he goes yeah. tea with the fucking owners. He's like, you got Budweiser, like like they, you know like yeah. you know the guy who orders his drink. He orders a fucking yeah. beer, you know beer. the, the yeah. basicest ass beer, you know basic bitch beer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's just awesome. And I man, double A, like I was loving the show, but I think it's in episode six that game they play the Celtics right. And man, that's when I was like, oh my, that's when like I felt basketball like come back alive in me when he's like, all right, I'm going to shoot someone right now, 12 feet, watch. Yeah. And he's yeah. telling the guys on the court and they're like, fuck yes. man, we can't guard mm-hmm. this guy. And he's just burning. He's like, shit, I was wrong. That was 13 feet. Yeah. And you're like, oh man, that's like, that's like so Larry, right? Yes. That's like the, the Larry that we all talk about, yes. us guys, yes. that we're like, the motherfucker was true ice in the veins, yes. true just competitiveness, mm-hmm. like it's fucking badass. When when everybody watched, um, when everybody watched fucking uh, the last dance, and we heard Jordan saying all that stuff, and where you were like, oh, that motherfucker was so cold, like it, like nothing meant nothing to him except competition. Yeah. That is also like Larry Bird. Yes, that's what this show yes. gives you. Where you're like, and you can tell there was a level of respect that Michael had in the last dance whenever he was talking about Larry Bird. Oh yeah, because he never beat Larry Bird ever. Man. He it and was that's a, that you're on the East together, right? It was a big thrill when he beat the Indiana Pacers. Mm-hmm. Like he felt like, hey, I beat you in some way, and then Larry makes a comment, and Michael's kind of like Libergas, right? He's kind of <laughs> like. I like, fuck you, you know, like yeah. What's Larry's comment? I forgot what it was, but he tells something to Michael, and Michael's kind of like stunned, like, like, like yeah, hey, you fucking asshole, you yeah, know? like fuck you, you know. I mean, like, right there. there's like a level of respect that you can see, like Michael is trying to attain that kind of status that Larry Bird has, and that's what's missing. I mean, and, and you just hear the stories day. more and more. You're just hearing the stories of Larry Bird trash talking. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, I'm going to shoot it from here. Oh, I'm going to score 50 points on you guys with my left hand. And, you know, the three-point contest. Who's playing for a second? You know, it's kind of like, <laughs> damn. You know, like, this guy is just talking shit all the time. I mean, I mean and that's fucking And again, great. you need to watch it. It's on HBO Max. Mm-hmm. It's Magic Bird. Magic versus Courtship Bird. Arrivals. There's a scene where he has a last-second shot to beat the Lakers. And Pat Riley's, like, narrating. He's like, I'm seeing it. It's right there. He misses the shot when he goes that Larry looks at him and he gives him that look like, how the hell can you leave me that open? And you can tell Pat Riley was like shitting his pants, but he was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, I remember the old video game, Double A. It was Jordan versus Bird. There was a fucking video game of it. Like, that was the game you played. Because Bird was considered the best player. He won the MVP three times in a row at one point. He was considered the greatest. That's insane. I mean, yeah. I mean, Bird, uh, in our circle, you guys are, you know, you, your two brothers are some of the biggest sports heads I know. You guys know your shit. You know your stats. You know all that stuff. And you guys have the utmost respect for Bird. I mean, I think he's a fucking badass. I mean, the footage is there. Yeah, so watch for yourselves. Undeniable. The footage is there. He went to the finals a shitload of times himself. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, he went five times, four times in a row, mm-hmm. uh, won Shit. three of them. You know, so yeah. I mean, the guy's got hardware. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, I mean, always a top fifty. He shut you down know. Detroit for a good while. He shut down Chicago. He shut down Atlanta with Dominique Wilkins. Yeah, I mean, he shut down Philadelphia with Seventy Sixers. I mean, you know, with uh, Doctor J. I mean, yeah. It's interesting the uh, parts in the podcast that they talk about him. Uh, you know, they're saying like you know to a lot of people, again, even though that you know it's the '80s, but it still was a thing of the time. He was like the great white hope. Yes, which he always hated that he's come out so many of times course, saying, "Of that, course, you know, I'm just playing basketball. I'm right. not trying to make a difference here. Right. I'm trying to play." Right. Exactly. And 
there's a clip that they show too in that courtship of rivals where he it's like the 87 finals mm-hmm. uh he goes magic is just the greatest he's the greatest player that's ever lived you know and he just like makes that announcement like like where he just can't believe what he just saw he's like it's just unbelievable you know, he, he's saying Doesn't it, he right have there. a really good quote about Michael, too? He has a really good quote about Jordan, like one of the best Something like Jordan God quotes. or something. Like, I saw God play tonight. He's wearing <laughs> number 23. I mean, like, you know? that's that's more like Larry. Like, I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, like dude, I I have a Tim Duncan jersey on right now. <laughs> I have a Ginobili jersey at my house. And I have a Michael Jordan jersey at my house. I'm like, but I would have no problem at all with owning and rocking that uh, yeah. green 33. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that motherfucker was a bad, yeah. bad man. And we unanimously all agree about yeah. that. I mean, he just was, we talked about his three pointers, but it wasn't just that. Right. The so it was so I much mean, more, right? He, he was getting, he was pulling down 10 rebounds a game. He was giving about six or seven assists a game. I mean, God, this is one of those guys. It just felt like almost when we've seen like, like when, when, when Curry's in, in the mix and you're like, he's just not missing no more. When Reggie would get in that mix, yeah. when you're like, when you're like, yeah. he's just not missing anymore. It was like everything. There were times when I would watch those guys play and I'd be like, Everything they throw up goes in. Everything yeah. they throw up goes in. That's what Larry was. Everything he yeah. threw up went in. They were like, and he was just a practice machine. Him and Magic, man, like, they would push themselves. Yeah, like there's a, a great quote that Magic says. He goes, you know, Larry's probably over there getting 300 shots in. I got to make 400 shots. <laughs> He's probably over there making 500. I got to make 600. You know, they're checking each other's stats on the paper. What did Magic? What did Magic do? What did Larry do? They're checking each other's to see what the hell they're yeah. doing. Uh, sadly, today's players see that and they're like, oh, how do I recruit that guy? Yeah. yeah. That's the shit yes. part of today, man. Yeah. That is such the shit part. I don't mean to bring it down because we're having a great talk right now about that. But, but man, that's what blows because it used to be you wanted to compete against that yeah. guy. Yeah. You wanted to play the best. You didn't want to be together. Now, now you don't. Nowadays, they want that guy so they have an easier path. It's like, what kind of shit is that? You know, everyone's all for working smarter, not harder. But I mean, like, and when your whole job is just competition, it's kind of like, well, fuck, don't you want a little <laughs> bit of like competition? Uh, let's see here. Uh, double A. Help me out if I'm missing any of these comments. Yeah, he goes, the day Larry Bird said, it's just God disguised as Michael Jordan. Yes, that's yeah. great right there. Uh, uh, let see. me see. Uh, Joe says Lakers versus Celtics. Uh, oh, let me see. Was a video game at one point too. Oh, okay. okay. I didn't know that. Uh, one. And then Joe says, "Baseball so long is America's pastime, but has since passed." Yeah. Baseball is a huge part. Huge, huge. Yeah. Bird was a bro. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Bird getting upset. A white dude was guarding him. <laughs> <laughs> and then he mentions, yes. He mentions their big three: Bird, Parrish, McKell. Yeah, that's uh, three. And then he yeah. says one of his favorite parts of the Dream Team doc was MJ telling Bird and Magic there's a new sheriff in town. Yes, I love that. that that's when like Magic kind of leans on Bird. He's like, "Don't get too close to Michael. Yeah, you, they'll, call be a foul. they'll call yeah. a foul." Yeah. I love that. Like, <laughs> I saw the scene. Yeah. I need to watch that shit. Man. You do. You really I, do. When it comes to docs like that, Double A, right? You, you just do. watch over. Man. I always remember Cause when it, like it's the best players. It's like Joe said. It's the best players, and they all still want to, like, this is their chance to play each other, five on five. Yeah. Ten of the greatest players in the world are playing each other. And, man, you can feel the intensity. Absolutely. You can really feel it. Like, like holy shit, they want to go at it. Double A, who do you put on that squad? Do you do you take Chris Mullen off? Yes. And who do you put? You put Isaiah on? Well, first off, I, I take off uh, Scotty Pippen, and I put Dominique. Oof, uh, we got to have the human highlight film. Man, uh, all the way around that. Jam. I know MJ Boom. didn't like him, but Stockton, I would take him out and put Isaiah. You That's have fire, to. too. Two, I like that, too. The two I, I best like point that. guards. I like that, I too. Mean, I, I like that best. a lot, actually. Uh, yeah. Leitner, I would take Leitner out and put Shaq. If I had to do the college, I'd have to put Shaq there. This is called, like, the dreamier team. Yeah, big time. I mean, can you imagine <laughs> Dominique being there oh, man. instead of Pippen? Oh, man. I mean, come on. The just, dude, the those dude guys, is averaging 26 points. Those guys were just so hungry for the big stage, right, Double A? And, like, while they never got rings, they might have got that. You know what <laughs> Joe I mean? says, no so, way, Scotty stays really over Dominique, Joe. Man, Dominique was a fucking beast. Total beast. Man, go man. watch that slam dunk contest yeah. with him and MJ where you're kind of like... And not just that, but... You're he's, like, damn, did he win? His duel with Larry Bird. 
Oh, yeah? He has a famous duel against Larry Bird. I need to see some of that shit right there. Man. I'm telling you, this is the basketball that makes me fucking, like, smile. Like, my cheeks hurt from smiling, like, tonight. Because <laughs> I'm just like, dude, it's, like, so much fun. It's, like, such, yeah. it was, like, such a better time for the game, man. And that's what I love about fucking hoops, you know? Uh, and this show, Winning Time, again, HBO Max, man, again, kudos for putting on a, a great thing. And again, about a team that I fucking absolutely despise and loathe. If you ask me what my number one hated team in basketball was, it would probably be these motherfuckers. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, it's very interesting. Again, but the Showtime Lakers, everyone loved them. You got to think about of the time. Yeah. You know? And of then the time. They, they kind of mentioned to the rookie, uh, though, it was like 63 to 3, Larry yes. Magic. And sometimes I wonder, I was like, Maybe racing was was there maybe, oh or, yeah, or or maybe you know because Boston was like they had only won twenty games the previous year, mm-hmm. and Larry did like the single greatest turnaround mm. until David did it until David broke it with the Spurs. Nice. So the Celtics were terrible, and he turned them around into like a major powerhouse team in the East. Interesting. I'm guessing they I really, didn't know that fact about Dave. That's pretty great. I'm guessing. The reason they probably didn't give it was because I don't know if you remember they said on the show, Kareem had won the MVP that year. Right. So it's right, kind of right, hard right. to give a rookie of the year probably to someone that has the MVP on the team, don't you think? Yeah. Maybe he deserved more votes for a rookie of the year. Maybe they just saw that Larry was more important to the Celtics than Magic was because he had Kareem. Sure. That's the only way sure. I'm thinking that maybe that's why the voting was so lopsided because he had the MVP. And who, who had votes the on that? Player. Uh, double, Sports that writers. Associated Press. Yes, it was. Yeah. Okay. But okay. still, it's kind of like, again, you had Kareem there. It's not like it was a big stretch for Magic to turn around the Lakers. You know what I mean? Right. They had the MVP there. But then there's that opposite moment, right, when we have the finals MVP. Yes. That was, I was always, I, that had always confused me. Even, even before this show, mm-hmm. I was always like, wow, why did Magic win? Because of this one game? He had this, just this one game. I thought the finals MVP was supposed to like who be the, the whole, series helped out. which Kareem by far had the way better set. Sure. He carried that title pretty much. Uh, I think Kareem was averaging like over 30 points Shit. against the Sixers, like 15 rebounds and like three blocks. I mean, he should have by far should have won. Beast mode. He really should have won that that finals MVP. So he got kind of screwed out of that finals. Yeah. MVP, which I didn't know until the show came on that it was kind of like David Stern's idea. Ah, there you he is. He rears his head. <laughs> you know, Kareem's not here. You're here. You're the man of the moment. I want you to win the MVP. It was kind of like, huh. He's like, I had never heard of that. It was a great game. Mm-hmm. It was a really good game. 42 points, right? Like 15 rebounds, 15, 7 assists. Oh, 15 rebounds. Oh, that's an amazing but, game. <laughs> but what they never say, and I was kind of hoping it would say here, Jamal Wilkes was another powerhouse player for the Lakers. He scored 37 points that night as well. No shit. Yeah, so, I mean, it wasn't just like the Magic show. Jamal Wilkes did kick in 37 points, too, with Is them. he casted in the show? Yes, he's number 52. Okay. Uh, they show him quite a bit. If you okay. see it again, you, you would know him. He was kind of like the light skin dude. Okay. But okay. he was there. He was he was a big uh, part of it. So nice. Uh, yeah. So uh, I don't know. Uh, it seemed like I didn't know that was all the politics was kind of behind Magic winning. Yeah. The finals MVP. It, it did make sense that you know from Stern that you would want someone that's there to receive sure, this award. But it did kind of yeah. seem like a slap to the face of Kareem. Yeah, I do. Because he could have been the MVP and the finals MVP that year. Yeah. Shit, that's fire. Yeah, that would have been really dope. Uh, what have we got in the comments? Joe somebody? says, no way Scotty stays. Uh, <laughs> Joe says, dude dude hurt recently that it was Magic keeping Isaiah off. Oh, maybe it was. Uh, you know, they had really had no love at all for the Detroit Pistons. I'm even surprised they were okay with Chuck Daly. Uh, and that Dream Team doc, though, they make it seem like it was Michael. Yeah, that was like if Isaiah's on the team, I'm that's not. kind of the commonly accepted reason why. And he they kind of show it on that Dream Team doc. So, yeah, yeah that's interesting. That is. Interesting. Uh, then Joe says, "Dude, I love Dominique. I was a little upset when we let him go, so Tim could wear 21." That was like my brother's favorite player. So it was kind oh, of yeah. like he. It was like a dream come true for him to play in San Antonio. I remember that. I remember being like, "Oh wow!" Like you know, boys, guys coming here or whatever. You know? And then Joe says, I don't remember this part, but he goes, fuck, no, I hate the Mavs and Rockets more. I don't, I don't remember what we said there. 
Um, oh, that I hate the Lakers the most. Oh, okay. Of NBA. Okay. Yeah, I gotta go with oh, you, Joe. They're, they're up there. I gotta go with you, Joe. Dallas probably for me more than the Rockets. Man, yeah. the Dirk years. God, oh man. yeah, they could be interchangeable for me. <laughs> uh, and then Joe says Spurs essentially had two first round picks. David's rookie year with him and Sean. Mm. Uh, coming off big college game and Sports Illustrated cover. Yeah. I mean, Definitely. it was just a really good show. It showed to you know the they they gel. They end up going like sixty and twenty two that year with Pat Riley and Paul mm-hmm. Westhead. Mm-hmm. Uh, they beat the seventy sixers, who were a powerhouse in the early eighties, with Dr. J. Uh, Dr. J took the seventy sixers to the finals in seventy seven, eighty, eighty two, and eighty three. So they were uh, they were like the first powerhouse of the eighties. And the I East. I love his introduction in the show, right? The, like, I just don't the like man. that. I, sh- it's a man great just... introduction. I just don't like the actor they put. Yeah, because Doctor J, if you see him in nineteen eighty, the dude is trimmed. Yeah, he fucking has his head shaved. The guy looks a little too old, right? And he's dunking air yeah. all over everybody. Shit. I saw a picture of Doctor J not that long ago, and I was like, oh, he looks still and he still looks good, good right? Yeah. Yeah. Except for the hair is gray. It's gray, but that. yeah, Doctor J was. Yeah, at this point, he was like the Michael Jordan of this era. He but was just the most exciting NBA. Maybe player. they were trying to portray the way that it's a guy on his a way wiser, out. But he doesn't yeah. even retire until like eighty six or eighty seven. Yes, that's interesting too. You know what I mean? So, I, I like know. I said, Doctor J yeah. never looked like the way he did with this actor playing. Right. Him, you right. Know? But besides that, though, like the the introduction, the it, respect, it's good. The, you, you feel the presence. Like Doctor J was was big time. And as much as that the show kind of builds you thinking like, man, you want Larry and, and Magic or whatever, when you get Larry and I mean you get Magic and Dr. J, you're kind of excited because Magic specifically says like I had your poster on my yeah. wall, like this is my guy. Yeah. So it's a, you're getting to face your rival. And they don't really I mean, show your, it. your hero. You they know? really don't show it either, but apparently like in his rookie season that Doctor J had him over his house. Yeah. And had him stay with him too. So he got to stay with Doctor J. A few times. That's amazing. You know yeah. I mean? So I mean, it's a great. It was the greatest player. The most, not the greatest, the the most popular player right. in the league. Again, he was like Michael Jordan. This guy was just dunking over seven footers like nothing. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was just dominating. <laughs> That's just, I just love the intro, man. I thought they did. It was great. Oh, that was great. The it man, made me feel big. Like Dr. Yeah. J. Like, you're like, oh, shit. And like, like I said, he, he was is, like Magic's know? first big rival. He played in three finals yeah. against the dude, you know? That's, so, that's fucking awesome, yeah. man. I, I love it. I love that, how it builds those type of things. Yeah. You know what I mean? And in then after that, show. that's when he moves to Bird. Right. You know? So it was right. kind of like he had to go through Dr. J and then Bird. You know? Which so. is cool because it's like, one is my hero and one is like yeah, my, my ultimate rival. Right, exactly. So you love that, and that's what you know. The great uh, drama uh, that these writers spin in this show, and again, it just makes you feel excited about basketball. Like this was a time it was kind of like, ooh, the Seventy Sixers and the Lakers are playing. Like holy shit, you know, or Boston. That was a big game to play Boston. I mean, double. I told you, I watched this show to the end, not knowing what was going to happen. Yeah, I didn't know, and I didn't look anything up. I didn't go to Google. I didn't go. I was like, wow, I. And man, it made it so much more fun and enjoyable for yeah. me to not know. Like, oh, I, I don't know who did, yeah. did they win in eighty? Did they? I didn't know anything. And so for me watching, it, I was like, man, it's fucking, it's great. It's yeah. great to kind of not know things, whatever yeah. you know, not knowing the coaching. Of course, there are a couple of things that I do know because I just know enough to know that, you know, obviously, you know, who becomes the coach and yeah. things like that. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I mean, it's like. I mean, it was a it was a mystery to me. Yeah. I thought that was yeah. great. I thought it was really great. Uh, I, I mean, I highly, highly suggest it. I cannot personally recommend yeah. it more. If you have HBO Max, go watch Winning Time. If you don't, it's like have you said, it. I've been trying to recommend this show like for a few months already. Yeah, exactly. Double A has mentioned it. He's posted it in the Friday Night Faithful group. Um, and uh, again, it's just yeah. really forget it. If you don't like the Lakers or not, it's just a really good sports doc. You know, it's really cool. So. Watch it. Check it out. It's on HBO Max. You can stream all 10. Yeah, super, super, super fun show. Again, I think even a a, a, a not-at-all basketball fan could watch it and love it. I mean, I would yeah. show it to my sister. I would show yeah. it to Jess. I think they would both get enjoyment out of it. Like, oh, I think they would. It's a, it, yeah. it, it creates interest in you. Yeah. You know, It makes you want to look things up. It makes you want to know more about it. You know, So uh, my hat is off totally mm-hmm. to the creators. 
Uh, they did a wonderful job, and I, I'm so glad to hear there's going to be a season two. Yeah, I was too. I was kind of like, cool. I'm hoping they do the whole 11, 12 seasons that Magic played. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm hoping they do it. So. And then eventually, again, you can do losing time, the fall yeah. of the Lakers with LeBron, mm. you know? I had that joke for a long time, so I'm going to get that out twice. So in this, Joe says I'm checking out. <laughs> you're checking you're, you're checking out? Oh, okay. Uh, Joe, we appreciate you being here if you're checking out. Uh, I think we are, later. too, anyways. Yeah, I think we're checking out, too. Double A, anything else that you want to say about the fantastic No, just show? watch it. Just check it out. It's on HBO Max. All 10 episodes are there. If so. we're wrong, let us know. But I think that you will thoroughly enjoy it. If you're a non-sports fan, if you're a casual TV watcher, if you're – Anything at all. If you're just looking for something to watch, you're like, man, I binged all my favorite stuff already. I've, I'm caught up on everything. I'm waiting for Obi-Wan. I want something to binge in a week. I like to go home after work every day. I just put on two or three hours of, a, of any program. Watch this in like four nights or three nights, and I promise you'll be like, what a great show. I'm so glad I watched that. Again, I called it in the intro, this is the Ted Lasso of this year. I, again, not the same kind of heart. A different feeling, <laughs> a different vibe, but but again, it, it does have heart, and I think it's going to get all the Emmys. I really do. Double A. Really if it think. if it is, if it gets nominated, it should win. It so. absolutely should get nominated, and I think that it absolutely. Joe will says, "Do you win. think they'll do a Celtics too? Probably not. Probably not. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to approach this like winning time thing or whatever. I think it all depends on who do you get involved to do it because the the showrunners on this are pretty much like big time Lakers fans." And that's why they wanted to do it. And they're doing a season two, so I imagine you keep the same actors and you keep the same story going. You would hope so. And then Joe says, no, I have the show queued up, and as soon as y'all get off. Okay, cool. I want to hear more, Joe. As we as we post throughout the week, uh, Joe, promoting this show, please post your comments, man. I sincerely would love to hear uh, what it is you have to say and what you're thinking about the show as it goes along. Because, again, I owe, I owe it all to Double A. Thank you so much uh, for telling me to watch it, man. And I watched it, and I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed watching clips of it again. And, again, that episode six, man, where they finally face Celtics. And uh, I think it's the season, the yeah. regular season. Mm-hmm. It's so much fun. It's like, oh, Yeah, the shit. leprechaun. Yeah, where they're, they're all freaked kind of, out about yeah, the Boston it's, Garden, you know. And I've already been seeing memes of where it's John C. Riley just saying like "fuck Boston," yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. So it's it's already out there, man. So and it's Joe said he still hasn't watched Lasso. Oh, you got to get on that, brother. You got to get on that. Get on that for luck. You know, he wants you to watch that. So, um, shit, double. I got nothing else except an empty cup. So no, I got nothing else. Just watch. It's good. You'll like it. So yeah, we wouldn't steer you wrong. At least we're not trying to, guys. Uh, so, um, so we like to say at the end of every show, uh, that we'd like to remind you all of again, is that, uh, you know, today's the day to do something today's the day today to make it happen. So, uh, do it, make, uh, make a run for it, make a, a fast break for it, seize the day. Uh, I can certainly tell you that Jerry Buss did that. Dr. Jerry Buss, when he a- acquired the Lakers, when he chose to draft Magic Johnson. Watch me how to handle a motherfucker. Yeah. And when Magic Johnson decided to... Uh, Magic motherfucking Johnson. Exactly. <laughs> win an NBA championship in his first year. Uh, you know, they definitely seized the day. They're the epitome of that. Oh, Again, yeah. a rookie owner. Yeah. A, ro- a rookie coach, a, a rookie coach, and a rookie player. And a rookie player. Yep, that's pretty fucking hard to do. You know what I mean? Pretty much our first time out the gate, we're gonna go ahead and win it all. So they definitely seized the day. Uh, but another thing that Doctor Bus, uh, you know, uh, embodied was what we also say from the words of the great Steve Rogers, Captain America, uh, on their way to the time heist in Endgame is to see is to up uh, seize the day. It's not to seize the day. It's to do whatever it takes. And by all me- by all means, he did. You know. Uh, oh yeah, he did. Hiring he sure did. Jack McKinney, yeah. an unknown second an assistant coach, you know. Promoting uh, Claire, getting Jeannie to maybe do some uh, business around the area. You know? Yeah, creating the Forum Club. You know, the, the Laker girls yep. adding sexiness yep. to it. You know what I mean? Uh, the man definitely epitomized doing whatever it yep. takes and seizing the day. So. Uh, guys, for us here at Just Another Friday Night, we'd like to remind you to do both those things. Seize the day and do whatever it takes. Uh, I am one of your two hosts, CM Chuck, and across from me is... Double A, guys. Have a good weekend. All right, you guys have a great weekend. Stay safe, be smart, and no matter what, go Spurs, go! <laughs> good night.